Morning, morning. Morning, Roxanne. Roxanne always prompt, punctual. Angela Maru, morning, Angela. Thank you so much for my brooms, Roxanne. I see the numbers. Our brooms are growing, and that is good. Um, Cyril Mayas, good morning, sir. Daniela Williams, good morning. Michelle, superwoman, morning to you. Dion Ku, morning. Morning, Deborah. Charm Rich, morning. Dawn Khan, morning, Dawn. Macaroni Tony. Denise Howell said in a question, morning to you. Yes. Neil Francois, always present. Morning, sir. Shah, morning. Add Bear, morning, Mava James, morning, Mava. Hazel, Allen, morning, Allison, voice, morning, Allison. Justin Small White, good morning. Morning, Carol. Carol, I don't have to ask what the weather is like by you because the sun by me here is ridiculous. Victoria Isidore, good morning. Morning, Claire. At the Chandler morning, Ruven Alda, good morning. Mikkel, good morning. Eva Smith Spivy, morning. Pamela O'Connor, morning to you, Pamela. Fred, morning. Arlene Lucien Stewart, good morning to you. Sandra Watson, morning, Sandra. D nice morning D. Hola web morning to you. I know some people forgot that I said on um, on Sunday that given the fact that today is a holiday, I will be able to do the live today at eleven instead of having done it yesterday morning. Um, yeah. So yes, Michael, the heat is on. Literally and figuratively in the politics and almost every other aspect of life in Trinidad and Tobago and beyond. Don Joseph, morning, Don. Phil Dollar, morning, Phil. Winston Jones, morning to you, sir. And so let me jump in. Let me extend e greetings to all to the Muslim community of Trinidad and Tobago. And of course, well, all of Trinidad and Tobago for those who maybe marking the day in whatever way. Um, I know when years gone by, at this time, I'd probably still be standing in a, a line, a long line by some roti shop, waiting to buy bus of shots on Valkyrie because for some reason it's in green in some of us, culturally, that once it's a, it's a holiday um, that may be considered to be, but it was a time when Eid was seen to be um, um, an East Indian holiday primarily because the majority of persons who were of the Muslim faith seem to come from the um, East Indian community, but we've seen a lot of changes with respect to that now. We have persons of, of all different ethnicities um, joining the, the Muslim faith, but there was a time when it was felt that because it was seen to be an East Indian holiday that you needed to you needed to have roti curry. So I would have been in a line. Yeah, and then eventually I told my mother, you know, for that nonsense, I'm not, I'm not doing that. No. So it makes sense. <laughs> there is no law that says you must eat curry for Eid or for, or for Diwali. Um, well, unless you belong to the people. I don't know. I don't even, I don't even think most the Muslim community really um, has curry for you, but anyway. Andrea Innes, morning, Angela. Andrea Angela Kati, morning to you. Deborah says, not me, I never did that. <laughs> and I was back in my teenage years, Deborah, early 20s. So when mommy say, that's what she cooking, I had to go, but she not going to do it. So poor me, I had a trek with my, um, my school bag on my back. And head up to, to the um the roti the roti rest the roti shop to get that. Yeah, you know, as I said, that is um 
that was once upon a time. Yeah, so. Right. Winston says corn beef and rice. That is a very good menu, Winston. Even though there may be those who tell you corn beef expense. <laughs> Hello, Benj. Morning, Anna. Sister, that morning, Anna. And you know, I always had to ask you, we'll see whether I like in, on your, in your neck of the woods, on that side of the world. It's more cold than anything, more often. Good morning to Teresa Conliff. Teresa, of course, would have gone back to, um, to Canada, having come for Carnival. And yeah, I see she's having a good time there. Morning, Joy. Um, good morning also to Mother Tunapuna. Morning to Angie. Just on, I think it was on Sunday I was saying that I needed to call Angie and then I got a call from Angie, so yeah. Right, so let me get into it. So again, I, we are sending greetings of the day to the, to the Muslim community and uh, to the rest of the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago who will be marking the day with them. Ashton Clark, morning. Valerie Bowen, morning, Val. Jennifer Nathan, morning to you. Jennifer says she bought yam in Toko and it's going on fine. Hmm, that is also a good menu um, for today. Jennifer. It crossed my mind to do that too. But, mm, we'll see how that goes. Right, let me also extend with the greetings to Angela Marcel Figaro, who um, I believe is celebrating a birthday today based on what Facebook told me. So I'm hoping that it's correct, Angela, and if that is in fact so. Greetings of the day to you, and we trust that it would be well spent. And to any one of you all, anyone else on who may be celebrating a birthday today, but because we are not linked by via Facebook, I, I would know. Greetings to you all as well. So let me jump into it, right? So Joyce then Small White says charming noodles. Oh, yes, yes, that's one of my favorites. <laughs> Judy Bowen, morning, morning, Judy. Judy, let me also say morning to Judy Khan. Gail Rambley, Gail is having fish and chips, mushy peas from the UK. <laughs> Audie Sylvester, Annette McConney, morning, Annette. Fred says, Dominic, you are the man to interview Gigi. I would love that opportunity, um, Fred, to interview Mr. Griffin. All these, all these um, you know, easy questions that those who have had the opportunity so to do have been throwing out at Mr. Griffith and allowing him to, you know, get away with murder. Not me. He ain't running no rings around me. Um, Deborah says it's also leave it there's birthday. Is that right? <laughs> well, if that is in fact so, leave it there. Um, birthday greetings to you. That's why you went, you went back up the road. Joyce Lynn is saying she loves to make vermicelli, so she's making some. I've never had that. I've always said I would want to try it, I never did. Denise Cummings, morning. Oh, yes. Maria Lyons, morning to you, Mr. Chance, Brian, others. So I was I was looking at, at a video before I before I came on. And um, you know, we had an almost well, yesterday was was another one of those most unfortunate days where we would have recorded at least three killings, the most um, heart rending of which was the decapitation of the four year old as a result of a domestic dispute between her mother and stepfather, right? And um, you know, there's public debate with respect to the man's mental competence and, and the like. Uh, we also had a young mother who was gone down, and we are hearing that, that she would have been receiving death threats. For quite a while, I would have made several reports to the police. Um, we don't know what, what um, yeah, we don't know what would have been the outcome of that with respect to those, those reports. And then we had a 19 year old um, who was stabbed to death by his common law wife, who is 25 years old. Um, and in all of those, in all of those situations, you know, it, it is cause for concern. But I was looking at this video just now I, um, of an altercation that took place at Independence Square. I think I'm not too sure, I didn't notice the date, but it is of a tida parked up on, side, on the side of the road you know, that seems not too far from, um, from the cathedral. And there's a man sitting in the driver's seat of the tida and a woman standing outside the tida. I don't know many of you have seen the video. 
she has the door open and she cussing the man and telling him, you know, threatening him. If you only try son, what you want to do, what you want to start, what you want to start, you know, you know the you know the gun talk. And I would what about she would do to him if he but so I guess and he's probably trying to close the door and she insists and she wants to make her up and so so he get fed up, jump out of the car and start to rain some licks on him. Yeah? So he started cuss and he vex and he fed up and he fed up and it blows. She fall down, he, she get back up. Again, he goes around to the front of the car, rain some more licks on her, jack her up on the wall. Um, and more licks and her daughter is there calling out mommy, mommy, mommy. And I don't know if it is the woman, friend or sister, whoever. She's there. And after he put some licks on the, the woman, who, I don't know, he was probably in a relationship with her. Um, he make a grand charge to hit the friend or the sister, whoever she is. Now, it took two, two minutes and 25 seconds before the police arrived on the scene. But in that two minutes and 25 seconds, only one person, one man attempted to intervene and part. Everybody else, based on what you're seeing in the footage, have their phone out and recording because everybody looking for likes and shares, right? Nobody else trying to say, hey, all or, or, or try to, to intervene. Now, I know people have said in the past, you, you could, you, in trying to intervene, you could um, you could end up getting your death. But based on what you're seeing in the video, um, the woman didn't seem to have any anything. And the kind of licks that this man was, was putting on this woman, because clearly she she didn't expect him to, to do that. So I don't know if it is that this is the first time it's been like that. But for her to be cussing him out the way that she was doing, and then the amount of licks I see in that video, I, I, do, I don't think I want to share it on the, on the page, right? But you have her little daughter there crying and saying, mommy, mommy, whatever. But the point I want to make is, in that two minutes and 20 seconds that it took the police to arrive, and only one person intervened, right? Was sufficient time for us to have another murder statistic. Not sufficient time, okay? That there was enough time for the fella to do serious harm to the woman or for her to do serious harm to him because as i said in the case of the 19 year old guy who was stabbed by the 20 his 25 year old common law wife so it's not always that the man is the aggressor in this case he it appears that he attempted to avoid the situation and he couldn't take it anymore probably because he's telling her to behave and she is making this thing and some people we see somebody recording it the embarrassment and he fed up and he tripped the point that I'm making, we, we quit to blame Heinz and blame Rowley for the crime situation. Right? Everything that happened, blame Heinz. So yesterday, this unfortunate incident with this guy who decapitated the four-year-old. And everybody is so right up. Oh, how something like that could happen? How you could watch an innocent child and just chop off her head? But we want to blame. right? But blame Rowley for that. And blame Heinz for that. Because I, I don't know how Dr. Rowley and, and, and Mr. Heinz could have prevented that. People in their private house, their private dwelling, you don't know what's taking place inside there. The neighbors don't know what's taking place. Yeah, they probably hear cussing and so on taking, taking place, but that might probably be a, a normal thing coming from that, that place. So, eh, they cussing again, okay. All right. But you don't know what is happening. The woman leave, went to the police station to make a report, left the daughter there because based on the account that she gave, the, she was calling the daughter, but the daughters uh, wanted to stay with the guy for whatever you know, your daughter say, look, he's smiling, he's laughing, or whatever it is. And yeah, you come back home to find that your, your daughter has been decapitated. But Heinz blame to blame for that, Rowley to blame for that, the government to blame for that, Willa Christopher to blame for that. But he else, right? Okay. The 19 year old who was killed by his 25 year old common law wife. Mr. Heinz to blame for that, and Rowley to blame for that, because apparently, Dr. Rowley and Mr. Heinz have a crystal ball that there's a certain time of the day they look into it, they will be able to see. All the murders that will take place the following day and they could call the police or make an intervention. Well, Mr. Hines is probably still in the police service. He could put on his, his Gideon boots and khaki suit and jump on his, his um, wild mare and ride down to wherever it is and, and stop the crime, right? And then uh, the, the woman was murdered in San Fernando. Similar circumstances to the businesswoman who was killed last year. In terms of jumping her car, guy run up, open fire, kill her. And the opposition will speak about the state of crime and what should that come into when you read the comments. But I hope they take note that all of these men, right, critical point to note, that every one of these, well, well, men and women, these persons who would have committed murder, that if they are apprehended by the law, 
the police does the investigation, they detect and they arrest these people. That thanks to the opposition party, the likes of Janti Lachmidi and Anuram Rubin, every single one of these persons are entitled to now apply for bail and be let back out on the street to kill again. Now, at least in two of those three circumstances, it was a one-off thing because, well, with the guy who, who decapitated his stepdaughter. Up until the point when he took his cutlass or whatever it is he used to chop off the child's head, he was a law-abiding citizen. A law-abiding citizen. As far as we know, he didn't have a criminal record before that, which means according to the criteria of the leader of the opposition, he is entitled. Should she become prime minister, he would have been entitled to apply for a firearm user's license so that he could access a firearm. So instead of using a cutlass or a knife or whatever it is, you could use a gun to kill, which is perhaps easier to do than decapitated. Yeah? But to the, the, the folks on the other side of the political fence who would look at what took place yesterday and probably what will take place today, and again, Chant Hines must go. Hines is the most incompetent minister of, of national security we've ever had. And Hines this and Hines this. Please bear in mind, there is no crime plan that Hines could come up with. There is no crime plan that Dr. Rowley can come up with, right? That can prevent the perpetrators of these crimes from getting bailed, thanks to the opposition party. Just bear that in mind. So even if the government comes up with the most foolproof crime plan, and we see that the crime detection rate goes somewhere it is now, which is at about between 12 to 15 percent, and let's say it goes up to 90 or 95 percent, where as soon as a crime is committed, a murder is committed, that within days or within hours, the police are able to apprehend the perpetrators and, and put them behind bars. According to the philosophy of the party, the government in waiting, these persons are all entitled to apply for bail. They have a constitutional right that after 105 years of them not being able, notwithstanding constitution, not being able to access bail if they were, if they were accused of committing a murder, today they can. And I wonder what Jayanti Lakwidiyal has to say, that if she too would have been so appalled and taken aback by this decapitation, that based on her vociferous and, see what I want to use for it, her position in the, in the parliament, in the Senate a few months ago, where she stoutly defended the rights of every citizen, regardless of the crime that they are accused of, to apply for bail. Her argument is that when you put these, these perpetrators behind bars, you create single parent homes. Well, there is no child there anymore. So if it is that this individual is deemed to be mentally competent, fit to stand trial, he's entitled to apply for bail. And you know what will happen? He's bound to find an attorney who is willing to take the case because every man requires a defense. And more often than not, when you see persons who are accused of murder coming before the courts, applying for bail, and in a lot of instances are successful, the attorneys who are representing them belong to a particular party. More often than not, right? But I am certain that you would have at least one or more attorneys out there who would be willing to stand before a judge or a master of the court or a judge. Well, I don't even hear them talking about judge, um, A master of the court to plead on behalf of this individual to say, well, the man doesn't have a criminal record and this is his first um, criminal offense. And given the circumstances which would have led to him committing this crime, we are saying that he, he, he's not considered to be a threat or a danger to society. Never mind the fact that the possibility exists that if he could chop off the head of a, of a four-year-old, then he would have no problem doing the same thing or worse to the child's mother. Okay? Because you could, I mean, I you see the child show your videos and it's really heart wrenching to see that this little child, innocent child, wouldn't do nothing. Her mother just picked the wrong man. And, but when Dr. Rowley said, choose your men wisely, they rake him over the coals. Yeah, Rowley took thing and he said, uh, Here you get what you say. And he's the prime minister, here he witness and all kind of thing. And I think for you to say and whatnot. But there is wisdom in it. Choose your men wisely. Because today, she no longer has a child. After nurturing this child for four years, you no longer have a child. Right? And it's because of your poor choice that you no longer have a child. 
Who knows what this child's future might have, might have held? Who knows what she could have accomplished? We will never know now. Because the only future she has is a coffin and either a, a, a cremation or six feet under. That is her future. That's the end of the day. Because of the mother's poor choice. Okay? But Rowley, something wrong with Rowley when he said, I'm choosing men wisely. When he said, I am not in your bedroom. Some men just need to be by themselves. Relationships is not for them. They should avoid that. But then you have some women who can't help it and then they run to the, the bad man. He's a shooter. Yeah, that's what they like. Okay, well, your, your, your child paid the price. And now I see the father is saying that he would have attempted to, on many occasions to get custody of the child and whatever is the situation, I don't know. But just to make the point, right, that all of these persons, thanks to that other party, are entitled to be. Possibly could get it too. If it is that you have one of the top shot guys, but they have the best lawyers, one of the top shot lawyers. Everybody, they want to name any papers, you know. They want to name any papers, so everybody can see, well, hey, you see that lawyer, yeah? That lawyer, they were, he, but he was able, he get, he get bail for that man. So if, when I commit a crime, I go in by he. Clearly, he knows how to maneuver in the courtroom. Clearly, he has skill, because if you could get a man, not saying, because at, at the end of the day, notwithstanding the pleadings of the attorney, it is left to the judicial officer. To give, but if you could give somebody who is already on bail for murder, bail for another crime that they commit while they're out on bail for murder, anything is possible. Why not put in that in pass? She's history in this country. Right? Just to make that point. So we hear people talking about reintroduce the death penalty and all of these different things. Reintroduce the death penalty. Well, for the death penalty to work, you need to be convicted of a crime first. And as the most the most What's it? The most the heinous, I don't even want to say heinous, but the crime that most that is most spoken about in this country is murder, right? And we talk about every time you hear it, talk about the crime situation and the crime situation. You would get the impression from some people crime is murder is the only crime. But when they talk about the crime situation as really murder, they, they reference it. Right? But if it is that we given the, the one of the deterrents before that would have Cause persons who might be inclined to commit, a, to, to commit murder was the, the idea, the thought of having to sit down in the remand for 10 to 15 years before your case called. And your case being called doesn't mean that it's going to be dealt with expeditiously because your case could go call, call today. You're going through the preliminary inquiry phase, or we no longer have that, which is good, thanks to this administration. But then you have to go through the whole process of the trial and so on, and all of that, which could take another how much years. So, to kill this man by the police, catch me. Go and sit down in that man and you see the conditions of those prisons. And some of them have friends who are inside there who will probably tell them, boy, you know, it's in. Yeah, because we know they're making calls and whatnot and telling their friends the condition inside there. But now, that deterrence has been removed. Because you've seen plenty of your partners who, who as I say, taking ghosts, who pulling back people's skull, committing these crimes. You know they're committing the crime because when they, when they get caught and then they come outside, because you know, so the man here will choose Tuesday for the crime and by Thursday morning he out on bail. And this case could take forever and a day to, to, um, to get called. So he outside for 10 years while waiting for this matter to call. And he living life normal. Taking more skulls, taking more ghosts in the meantime. Some of which the police may detect, some which they may not. Thanks to who? So, but blame Rowley and, and blame Hines. It's Rowley and Hines' fault that a man who committed a murder last week, who had a long rap sheet, who was known to the police, right? And when the police figure, yes, we catch this one. We have him off the streets. <laughs> Mere days later, he get passed by the police station and laugh in the police face. Laugh in their face. Say, yeah, yeah, back outside, eh? Just pass the layer now. Right? Or condition of the bail is that you need to go to the police station every Tuesday with your copybook to sign. And every time you go in the police station, you smile over the police. What I can do? Out and bail. When I leave the station, you know, you don't know where you're going and you don't know what I'm going to do. What the police is supposed to do? Hmm? What are they supposed to do? When this person should be sitting behind bars and that's one less nuisance for them to be concerned about committing crimes, committing murders. He out on the street again. But the supporters of that other party, 
wouldn't hold their members to book, right? The members of parliament to book, and in particular, those who would have played an instrumental role in overturning that law that stood for over 105 years, which would have seen these men behind bars. If they are caught with guns, whereas this administration is saying we want them to be held at least for 120 days without bail, the UNC said we're not supporting that legislation, so you get caught with a gun, high-powered guns or whatever it is, you apply for bail, you get through, by right? next day or two, you're back outside to go wherever you have your, your stash and continue to do what you're doing. But they're not talking about that and the contribution that that is making to the crime situation. Rowley must go and Hines must go. And if you feel if Rowley go and Hines go and you all put that other party into power, what if it's going to happen? Hmm? All of a sudden, the crime situation would be improved. So they remove Ula because Ula is not their favorite person. Right? So they have to work with what is sent to them by the Police Service Commission. Who are they going to put? Who are they going to put? Bring back Gary. But Gary wants to contest the St. Joseph seat. Of course, he's going to get the licking of his life. But still, he would be available to run for that position again. I bring back Gary, and what he's going to do? Bring back sort and do what? So after the men commit crime and they commit murders, well, they will find themselves um, facing a similar death. Yeah, they'll fall off a chair and die. They end up in the hospital. How they ended up in the hospital, what led to them being in the hospital in the first place to cause them to fall off a chair? And we're not going to talk about that. I'm talking about that. Hmm. But the only I listened to last night, um, the dog liar was on, a, on some, some program on, on Facebook. Um, he was a guest there, and I'm listening to him, and one of the callers to the program was saying, you know, um, this country needs to be rescued. And the only person who could rescue this country is Cam, the Honorable Kamla Prasad Nisessa. And the only party that could rescue this country from the state that it is in is the United National Congress. One Brian Big. But we know Brian's singing for his supper because he made mention in that, in that town, whoever it is they had, you know, about the constitutional reform and they're not supporting this government's efforts at constitutional reform because when they were there in 2010 to 2015 under Prakash Ramada, that they would have, con they would have conducted a constitutional reform exercise and the PNM and this PNM and Rowley didn't want to support it. Support what? And that the PNM organized protests around the, the, uh, the parliament building and was, was, was jeering at the government and using all kinds of derogatory terms to describe members of the government and they would have, and that, that document that would have been produced by Prakash Ramadan, and his constitutional reform team, it is there and, they, and we don't need to spend money to go through this exercise because we have that there. The people were protesting because runoff. I was there, a part of it. At that time, we were under ILP. When we had the relay in front of the, the parliament, which was then at the waterfront, where you had persons taking turns to sleep on the pavement, to protest on the pavement, right? So 24 hours for the day, you had people protesting in front of the parliament. Six o'clock in the evening, those who would have come from around lunchtime and they stay there till six, they get up and they leave and then the next shift come. And who's sleeping on the pavement until six o'clock the next morning when the next shift will come in and we're operating like that. To protest, we had Merle Hodge, who was a member of that committee, who said that she don't know where the hell runoff come from. Where that come from? That was not a part of the of the. Um, the document that they would have provided to the government based on their consultation. But all of a sudden, we get run off. And you have liars like Brian Bay who want to come and tell you um, the people were protesting because of term limits for the prime minister. Really? And fixed election dates. Really? You all brought that? When? The focus was on runoff. That's all Oliver's talking about. And, oh, they introduced proportional representation in, in the uh, local government um, reform. You all brought... These fellas are real jokey, you know. You all came with your proportional representation. It was the only amendment that you made to local government that you want to call reform. And the purpose of that was to make it easier for the United National Congress to be able to get older men in PNM controlled corporations where they would not have been able to get older men before. So when I listen to them both, they know in every in every corporation now we have. Counselors. No, that is not true. What nonsense. You know the difference between a counselor and an older man? 
and boasting about that, but that is that was your big your big achievement. And it wasn't because of to, to better men for the for the country. It was just for your own selfish reasons that you all wanted to make sure we need to create a way that in every corporation, especially in the PNM control corporations, where we where we could never get an older man, we will gerrymander and create a way. But today all the same all the costs in the EBC. I know the EBC, and the only way they could lose the election in 2025 is if the EBC and if the EBC take the election and the chief elections officer is a close relative to a former peer. They're still pushing, puddling that nonsense. You know? So they have already started to set the stage to tell you if and when they lose the election in 2025, it's because the EBC thief and the EBC gerrymandering the, um, the boundaries to make it easier for the PNM to win certain seats. And it's the EBC. So they, they are already setting. And you see, it's similar to what happened in the U.S. with Donald Trump refusing to concede and accept the fact that he lost the 2020 election, even though he knows that he lost. But create a narrative that the election was stolen because you don't want to accept the fact that you lost the election because of incompetence. You lost the election because of corruption. So blame the EBC. So the EBC must now be on guard, right? So that if... If and when they lose in 2025, is the EBC fault? Is Phil Nassis scope responsible for that? Is she? Yes. Rowley and them have a lock on the EBC. The same EBC. If, if that was the case, and the, the political directorate, the executive led by Dr. Rowley, had control over the EBC, today, the THA would have been run by the PNM, not the TPP, formerly and formerly PDP. It could never have come down to 14-1. It's the same EBC that conducted that election in Tobago that resulted in 14-1. So you can't come and tell me it's the same EBC led by Fern Narcisco presided over that election that saw 14-1 in Tobago. But you come and tell me now they could cheat the election in Trinidad. Under the same Fern Narcisco. So you have nobody working in the EBC who supports the UNC. So if it have any corruption or gerrymandering, they could go and run to Kamala and report and look, this happened and that happened. Right? I listened to this clown, Anal Roberts, talking about how um, on the night of, of the election in 2020, Rowley declared, um, was declaring victory even before all, the, all the, the votes had come in. You would think these people don't know and understand how the system works. That every single polling station, right? every party is supposed to have representatives in every polling station, so that when the doors close at 6 o'clock and the last ballot is cast, close the door and decide, leave, and we're going to begin the counting process. Every single political party is allowed to have a representative in that room to witness what is taking place. Now, if you want to be chief and you don't want to hire um, polling officers or whatever it is, that's on you. But you are allowed to have representation in every single polling station to represent your interests. So the same data and the same information that was coming to the PNM, as each polling station declared their results, because everybody inside there, so the same information that was being fed to the PNM is the same information that was being fed to the UNC camp and every. So you don't need to wait for the e, for the EBC to make a declaration. You don't need to wait because TV six and and TTT and CNC3 and whoever, who receiving. Some of them, sometimes information coming in, they get in their, their data based on lag time. So by the time they get data and updates with respect to figures, the political parties and their headquarters already have the data from their people inside the, inside the polling booths, inside the, the polling stations. They already know. But this, this foolishness that they want to promote, oh, yeah, Dr. Brawley was done declaring now. Victory already, and, and 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 the results, all the results wasn't the results was known by all the parties. They knew, they knew well. The same time, Balize House was getting the data. At the same time, well, wherever the headquarters was at the time, was getting the data. But they will play on the ignorance of the of the citizenry, right? To make us how do we know how we know they had so much seats and how much seats already. The same way you all knew that you had lost the election. At the same time that Dr. Olio was speaking, you all already knew the outcome of the election, which is why Mrs. Prasad Bissessa remained at her constituency office and she didn't go to wherever the headquarters was when she made her first statement. That is why. Because if she had anticipated a victory, she would have gone to wherever the headquarters was. So she knew from her office in Separia what the results was and it didn't make sense as far as she was concerned. 
to go on just as she did in 2015. Just as she did in 2015, when she stayed at her office in Separia, right? And didn't go to Rienzi Complex to console all of the UNC supporters who were sitting in Rienzi Complex who were anticipating a victory at first and when they realized what a more than flower we waiting for some level of consolation from the political leader, as has always been the tradition. Win, lose, or draw, you address your supporters at your party headquarters. When the PNM got the licks in 2010, Mr. Manning didn't run and hide. He didn't run and hide. What did he do? He went to Bali's house. He took blame. He accepted responsibility. They hound him out of Bali's house like a old dog, some people. But he took it. What did she do? She tells special branch, keep all your stinking car. Jump in her, in her, her sister, um, Toyota Corolla, and go on home. Absent so, um, special branch protection. You are still the prime minister. You were still the prime minister until 1 p.m. on Wednesday. Pending the official results coming out, you were still the prime minister. Special branch had a work to do to protect you because you were still the prime minister. But you tell keep all this thinking, car, because you realize you lost your, you know, about a day and a half, you'll no longer be prime minister. You vex, and you go on home. Now, if anything had happened to you in between there, them fellas would have had a pity cake, eh? Because of your irresponsibility. But that is the person who's telling you, put me back for another five years. Right. So there's a crazy indulgence moment. So you all know whenever I say that what was, what is what, right? But I'm going to play. Forgive me. So... But before I get there, I saw CCN TV6 put out two videos this morning. One of the Minister of Agriculture, Kazim Hussein, and Stuart Young giving arms in, right, they're giving arms, I guess somewhere in San Fernando, so they're giving out money. As you know, this is, a, this is something we see every year on this day. You have people lined up, so they know where they go and line up, and the, and the Muslim community would give arms. So... The same thing with Mrs. Pasabi says, I don't know where she is. So TV6 went wherever, Stuart Young and, and you know, I don't know, you'll probably see, the, I was going to post the video, but then I, I, anyway, Stuart Young and Kazem Hussein. So you see they walk in the line, a long line of people, eh? I mean, real people. And TV6 puts up the caption, so many in need. That's the caption, so many in need. And you see Stuart Young and Kazem Hussein walk in the line, whatever, and they get from based on what I'm seeing in the video, it appears they're only handing out hundred dollar bills. Yes, I'm gonna be petty this morning. Contrast to the video from Mrs. Pasabi Sessa, where she is working with her security um, officer. Now, mind you, Stuart Young has a security detail. I didn't see any of them around him. But Mrs. Pasabi Sessa working with her security officer, of course, because that is her human crutch, right? So she need, and I seen from time to time she's holding onto the woman's hand and so on. And she has in her hand five dollars and one dollar bills. Yes, I'm going to be petty. The highest paid public servant in this country. She has a few, just a few, five dollar bills, and and then I'd like they choose somewhere where the crowd isn't so large, so that the few five dollar bills and one dollar bills that she has in her hand could probably be sufficient, you know. So she walked, up, she went to a few people. You see, one lady sat down, and a old lady sat down, and she handed the woman up, extended her hand to give the lady a five dollar bill, and the lady just, you know, and wave her off. I don't need your five dollars, okay? But so, yes, I'm being petty. Of course, and you see here the, the, the video with Stuart Young and Kazem Hussein when you're reading the comments, all of a sudden, people know the right hand must know what the left hand gives them. And why it had a half camera. And why they call, why they, why they work with. This is something we see every year. All these television stations, they go wherever to run video for the evening news to show how much people line up and arms being given. Whether it is that it was, it just happened that maybe the ministers appeared there, but they go around the country looking for different places. They know the usual places they would go to videotape that. So they happened because I didn't see, they post up any videos of any other government ministers or any other members of the, of the opposition. But they have an issue, right? All of a sudden they have an issue. So I'm going to go back in a little bit. To look at the video with Mrs. Pasadi says and see the comments under there. And if it is that you have anybody who have problems with a camera being where she is, as they had issue. Because clearly, let's face, we know what the problem is. Right? If it is that, that Stuart Chung was only handing out $1 bills and Kazim was only handing out $1 bills, they wouldn't care 
that the media was there. They wouldn't care that the cameras were there. You know what? Yeah, so watch, watch them. That would again, people. What the luck could do? What the dollars could do? What are they supposed to do with that? But in as much as they're handing out hundred dollar bills, seemingly and only hundred dollar bills, this wicked, heartless, uncaring government, this wicked, heartless, and uncaring cabinet who don't care about the poor. That is the narrative that they keep spinning all the time. So they see this morning now is only hundred dollar bills. Kazim was in and out and Stuart John. So some people double, they get double. So Kazim pass and he hand them a hundred and then Stuart pass and they, the same person might end up getting a hundred too. So you get two. You think these people prefer there or they prefer to go where Mrs. Pasati says where you get five dollars and one dollar? They ain't gonna have an issue with the fact that she handed any people one dollar. At least, as he told her, at least she gave in. She gave in. But the only thing they could they could criticize about is why oh, it had a camera and why the left hand must see. You know what? Because all your vex that the camera will show that the amount that they're given, the amount that they are given as compared to what it is your political leader is giving. And that hurts you know there. So we need to find something to criticize. And what we'll criticize on and had the camera over the people's dignity. So what about the dignity of those where Mrs. Posadi says, but you see the hypocrites. I'm sure under that video, you wouldn't see as many of them complaining about the fact that the camera is there. We see through you all, you know. We see through you all. All them fooling nobody. Because I know Stuart Young personally. Me and Stuart, he good. Right? And Stuart, is not the kind of man to go and pick up the phone and call no media and say, come on, go in and give out hands. He's not about that. You can, in fact, you can, when you look at the video, you can see there's a level of discomfort on his, his part with the media being there. He don't need that. He does not need, I don't know, I don't know Kazim Hussein, but I, I would like to think that he is of, of similar stock. He does not stretch on all over the place. He always like, everybody knows who he is. Everybody knows what he's what he's about. When it's panorama, you see Stuart Chong pushing children panorama, um, senior adults panorama, he pushing pan going, he right there, heel on heel, walking with him. That because he's that is that is the nature of the man, that is what he does. So he does not need to go and call no media, come and see, look at giving out money. How that what are doing for him? It improving his stocks? It's not even in his constituency. So he doesn't need that. But they create that one thing, and the Bible say, all of a sudden they know what the Bible say. All of a sudden they have a problem with what's your chung doing and giving out, and everybody see it. You're good, we? Anyway, I'll decide if it is we will post the video. But I'm sure they will have it tonight on, on, on TV6. It's on this thing. Yes. So I said, I'm gonna show you, give, let me give you all an example of what I don't know if it is this is just propaganda or if this man is naturally clueless. But I, I would like to think I would like to think it's before. Yes. Before that. So I told you all just now about this um program that that and Roberts was on last night. Permit me just to play a little bit from it. Not long. Mm, where is it? Right. This one. Draw stats and do what we do. Two things I wanted to play from that. I want you all to listen carefully to the first thing that he says. That's yes, See, sometimes out as open and totally jump out. Hmm. So, let me just connect this device here. Just give me one second. Let me just do this. Right. Listen, listen to this. The strategy for winning 2020. Get money for that. Bring it back to cabinet. Get cabinet approval. Come back the next week with a pink sheet and get it confirmed. Then move it on and follow it through to make sure the Minister of Finance allocates the money and releases money so that that vision and new policy could be implemented. Men who have not done that want to lead UNC, want to be prime minister. What you all feel this is a parlor, all this serene, dynamic, all that cannot be serious. So understand this. Right now, Rowley has 21 seats. Listen to this, eh? Kamala has 19 seats. Sorry, right now, Rowley has 20 seats. 
Kamala has 19 seats and Tobago is two. Farley have two. Let me tell you right now, as you say, Farley has two seats. Kamala has 19. Paulie has 20. With St. Joseph toppling the Alsen crumbling, with Sandrick Grandy waiting to fall, they don't even know what the man MP name is up there. With San Fernando West, the sweet boy walking around in a cat suit all over the place, waiting to get a cocktail. Right now, Kamala is ready to win 22 seats. Tobago is two. That's 24, leaving Rowley with 17. And the PNM is not in government. Yet people do not understand that. They do not understand the work and where we are. Our country cannot afford to mess this up and to have another day of keep rolling. Already it's been too many days of talk. So the strategy is, based on what he just said, Kamala is prepared to win 22 seats. And they add in the two in Tobago and within their four, so right, 24. Whether they will sit with Fali and have some sort of negotiation or whatever it is, but they expect that the TPP are going to win the two Tobago seats. We tell these people the THA, elect, THA election and general election is too different. Right? But it seems that is their strategy. So I'm asking, have they given up on Tunapuna and La Hoqueta Talparo? Kamla don't want to win those two seats? Or is it that they've done their math and they've done their research and they've done their analysis and their math and analysis is telling them take Tunapuna and look and Lahoketa um Talparo out of the mix? Ain't no way only winning that. Because the only work that Foster Cummings is doing in, in, in La Hoqueta Talparo on his own as MP and through his ministry, the Ministry of Youth Development and National Service, that La Hoqueta Talparo go on PNM. Forget that. Juliana have a prayer. But yet, maybe that's the reason why you're not really seeing her, much of her in the constituency at this point in time. Probably because they're on the ground and the ground, they're like, hey, Olympia, mm -mm, forget that, you know. Foster doing thing up there. Olio, Olio, mm -mm. She couldn't make, when Foster didn't have a history there, when he was fresh, when they come with fridge and stove and all kind of appliances to try and buy boat and still get the tail cut. If in the face of that, you couldn't win. And now with all the work that Foster Cummins is doing there and then that he intends to do over the course of the next few months leading up to the general election. So like they give up on La Hoqueta and they give up on Tunapuna. As one forward, forget that. But I saw what, well, Mr. Naked must be very disappointed. And also to Israel Khan would also be very disappointed because I recall Israel Khan in his open letter to Mrs. Basadi Sessa where he would have chastised her for criticizing certain persons who have said and he would have questioned her on her eligibility to hold self. He did in that letter, as you all recall, indicate that whoever is her is the UNC's candidate in Tunapuna for the 2025 general election he intends to give his support to. So that is their strategy. They intend to win 22. So aside from the 19 they currently have. But anyway, while them, you know, and Mr. I, I, I was trying to find that video. There was a time Mr. Manning gave a speech where he talked about counting eggs um, in fall bottom. But he, 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 he explained it in a unique way that only Patrick Manning could. I was, I'll try and find it. So that while they think they have 19 solid seats in the bar that they currently hold, I wouldn't be so sure about that. Eh? But anyway, that's a talk for another time. So the focus is in Joseph, Sangri Grandi, San Fernando West. So you all plan to win San Fernando West with Macamillian, Mr. Ali Bukas, Mr. Marabella West. Just after eight months, I am prepared to abandon them for higher heights. Yeah, Mr. Yellow is the code. Mr. I ran for local election because I wanted to make a difference and I wanted to help the people of Marabella West. And there's so much that so much that needs to be done in Marabella West. And the people of Marabella, Marabella West need so much help. And just after eight months, you're ready to abandon these, these people. So have you, have you fixed all of the problems that you encountered during your campaign in Marabella West while you were campaigning last year? In eight months, we were able to fix everything. So now you are ready to move on because there's nothing left for you to do in Marabella West, Mr. Ali Bokas. Is that who you are going to put to, to, to challenge Faris Al-Rawi? 
And only and only you all counting that as anyway. So Marbe, San Fernando West, St. Joseph. And who is he? The assembly, uh, well, the presumptive candidate, he, he, Anil Roberts, right? So he working now, see the whole year now. For a kid, but like he abandoned Tunapuna, right? Because just like Julian John, at a certain time, you were seeing them posting up videos, they were walking the seat and all of a sudden. So it's only in a Roberts now. He don't heal, especially since Gary declared that he will be. So you really feel. That is Gary running in, in St. Joseph and Anil Roberts. So basically, you are competing for the same votes because the, the, the PNM votes in St. Joseph are not going to either one or earlier. Are you sure that? That be certain of. So these two candidates fighting for the same block of voters. And they already counted. And he thinks that he could take St. Joseph. The only time this clown was able to rest a seat in Dabadi Omera was a fluke in 2010. And it wasn't because he was charismatic. It wasn't because the people felt that he would do such a great job. He benefited from the likes of people like Winston Dukaran and Carolyn Sipasad Beechan and people like um, Gillian Lucky and those persons who were part of the, of the COP, persons who have some level, some modicum of integrity. And people say, well, you know what? If they are in that camp, the People's Partnership camp, well, okay, maybe... We could get them a chance. Maybe they would be able to temper the teeth in. Maybe they would be the conscience of the partnership. So when the UNC part of it decide to show their colors and want to dip their hand in the treasury and the cookie jar, hopefully those who belong to the COP, persons who we know based on their past, have some level of integrity, might be able to check that. But that didn't happen. You don't have that in 2025. So what you go in with in St. Joseph, in 2025, to tell the people. We're going to tell them. Rowley's a pedophile. Rowley's a rapist. Rowley have a red couch in, 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 in the Prime Minister's residence. And when you go in, when you carry them woman on the red couch, you just had to walk a long corridor and pass two parrots and a dog and all kind of thing. That's what we're going to tell them. We're going to talk to them about land aid. The same things that you keep regurgitating all the time on your doubles and coffee. That's what we're going to go and tell them. What you have to offer. Because these people are stupid. And they seem not to understand the demographics of a significant portion of the voters in St. Joseph. Which is why, when Mr. Warner contested Lopino Bonne West in 2020, right? And persons from the camp called me and say, hey, Jack went up, you're, you're, you're in? I said, no, I'm out. You all know I've been out for a while, I ain't coming back. I said, but I could give you all a word of advice. Mr. Warner cannot win that seat. For the simple reason that when you look at the demographics, the voter demographic of Lopino Bonaire West, there are certain areas where all of these things that Mr. Wana promising, these people don't need. Mr. Wana cannot go in places like Takarigo and Paradise and uh, um, in those areas there and, and places like, like Larry Sauce and all of these different to tell these people what. Uh, for tales and all that. Where you went and tell them? These people are well to do, well off, established. They don't have problems for water. They don't have problems for, for uh, you know, local government for things. They don't have these problems. So you can't go to these people and offer them things like food card and all that. They don't need those things. Where are you going to offer them? I said, tell Jack, don't waste him money. Forget it. But they didn't listen. And they keep calling me, come and walk. I say, I can't. I'm not doing that. I can't do that. You all know where I stand. I'm no longer in that camp. But I'm telling all you, Jack can't win that seat. Right? This promise about a market by Lopino and a library and all these things. No, you cannot. These people, their focus is on what they know about the individual. And unless and until Mr. Warner clears his name, these people will not vote for him. Do we waste all time. It's the same thing with Roberts in St. Joseph. People who live in places in Maracas Valley and who live in Valley View and Mountain View and all of these different places up on that side. The well-to-do community. The undefensers, right? The people who drive in all the big fancy car and all of them. You can't, you can't. What you going into those, those neighbors to tell them what? Now, we have pockets, areas where, where there may be people struggling. And they might be able to go and fool up their head and tell them about food card and baby grand and life sport and all that chopiness. And they will take chin up and give you the vote. Particularly the youth in that area who may not have voted before, right? And you could probably chain them up. 
but the others who know what 2010 to 2015 gave. The persons who are aware, who see the nastiness that he speaks about on, on doubles and coffee and dogla politics, you really feel they're going and want to put him back in the parliament? Despite the fact that the leader of his party has no problem putting him back there? She was upset, I know for a fact, when it is he attacked Penny Beckles the other day. You know, just since that, he has never appeared on a Monday night forum after that, eh? when he went after Penny Beckles. Never, because you see, there are certain PNM parliamentarians that Prasad Bissessa has respect for. And Penny is one of them. So when he went after Penny, and you saw it, she sat, she, when she was sitting in the, in the audience, and his camera spanned on her face, and you saw she, was, she wasn't pleased. And he has never appeared on another platform since then to speak. That's the kind of nastiness you expect to, to, to go to St. Joseph and win with. You can't be serious. But if that is the strategy, we can take out at least two of those seats. Right? Now, Sangri Grandi is a bit funny. Sangri Grandi has their challenges. But I would have had a conversation not so long ago with, with Roger Monroe, and, and he, seems to, he seems to be aware of what he needs to do over the course of the next few months um, to hold on to that seat, with help, of course. And I would like to think that the party would give him that help so he could handle his thoughts. Right? So, basically, we know what the strategy is. The 19 that they think they have, St. Joseph, San Fernando West. Make them good week. All they're real good. And Fali too. Fali too in Tabay. And they have people, TPP, who figure, yes, that's in the bag. Them two Tobago seats gone, TPP. Well, all right. We will see about that. Something else I wanted to play from that same clip. That's all. I'm going to get this here. Torture, nightmare, of incompetence. Every facet of life in Trinidad and Tobago has diminished. You just have to ask yourself, by yourself, quietly, at night, quiet. Boy, am I better off now than in 2015? He really asking that question. Am I better off now than I was in 2015? Ask every single taxpayer in this country if they're better. Every single one. From those who no longer pay income tax, thanks to Keith Rowley and and Mr. Embert, and to those who pay in at least 75, well, who pay in about $7,500 less per year in income tax. Yes, we better off. Yes, because when we wake up in the morning, we're certain we're not going to turn on the radio and hear about some minister name get called up in the wrong stand up. Some minister accused of bag of money. Some minister accused of thiefing. Some minister's name get was, is, is, is um, some minister was arrested. We know we're not going to hear that. Yes, we are better off because we've seen a lot of companies. Major companies in this country every year declaring significant profits. Now we see Anta Makala has uh, um, is now venturing into the Indian market with respect to, to bear the bear market in India, right? So they're spreading their wings. They intend to go to Ghana. They intend to go to India. They wasn't doing that when you all went off. You know what that means? More foreign exchange. But anyway, let me play this little bit of propaganda. And you see what, when they're dishonest. And he didn't correct him. I listen to what this listen to what this man says. Human being. You get this, right? You can greet with the with the hundreds of um, Muslims who attended the mosque today. Yes. And I, I, I interface with, with people all over the all over the East West Corridor. And So, yeah. Some of my dealers, I actually lays with the underprivileged. And Senator, they, they gave me messages to give you that when you were the minister's sport, that life sport program was actually reaching them mm -hmm. and helping them a lot. Senator, that template that you had for life sport would have make a big difference if, if that life sport program was implemented. Now, the crime situation would never have been as high as it is now, because you are the correct template to helping the underprivileged youths who didn't have a hope and didn't have a prayer. Your intervention through life sport was giving them a stipend, empowering them through education, and making their life more meaningful to them where they could be more productive. However, when the PNM came in power, they, uh, they stopped it. So I want to tell you, Senator, that a lot of youths from Digomatic.
to you that that life sport program was making a difference when you had it running. Um, so, so don't lose hope, Senator. That, that helping the underprivileged youths who didn't have a hope and didn't have a prayer, your intervention through life sport was giving them a stipend, empowering them through education, and making their life more meaningful to them where they could be more productive. However, when the PNM came in power, they, um, they stopped it. So I want to tell you, Senator, that a lot of youths from Digo Martin, from Sour Hills, from Puna Puna, they would have interfaced with me to give me a message to give you that that life sport program was making a difference when you had it running. Um, so, so don't lose hope, Senator. That, 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 that template was proper. But my question to you tonight is this, right? We saw where property tax. 49. You heard what that guy said, right? And earlier on in the in the um in, in this this whatever it is that it's called keep it real politics and more. Right? So it appears to be a Facebook. Um, just like how I do the same day, right? So he's talking about he's on the ground and he's working with Annel in St. Joseph and he will do his part and commit his resources and all of that to bring on the seat for the UNC and for Anil and all of these things. You heard what he said. Um, he is from, he is, he's on the ground and he hears what the people on the ground saying. And the people on the ground, the address, you tell him, send a message for Anil to tell him about the life sport program. You, but you heard the, the critical point, the misinformation and the lie. That when the PNM came in, they stopped the life sport program. Now, my version of history, well, not my version, the history that I recall, that it wasn't the PNM that stopped the life sport. Life sport was stopped in 2014 by Kamla Prasad de Sessa, right? Who stood up in the parliament and read out the report of the audit committee, cited all of the wrongdoings that had been identified by the audit committee of fraud, bid rigging, misappropriation of funds, all manner of, of wrongdoing. She read that out, not Keith Rowley. Kamala Prasad Bissessa read out that, that report, published it in the panel, right? And indicated that, she would be, that the program would be coming to a halt because they needed to conduct whatever investigations and whatnot. And in that same parliamentary session while she was speaking, she indicated to the same at-risk youth. She gave them the assurance, don't worry. I know some of you who are part of the program may be concerned that the program is coming to an end and what would you, what would be the replacement? But I give you the assurance that my government is going to, are going to put something else in place for you in the meantime. She said that. They put nothing in place. Nothing in place. And shortly thereafter, Mr. Roberts would have resigned as a member of parliament for W. Mira, as he should have done since 2010, 2011. Under his tenure, the four years and some that he was the member of parliament for W. Mira, an otherwise quiet constituency, uneventful in terms of crime, we had over 76 murders taking place in W. Mira under his stewardship as the member of parliament. And the majority of those murders were linked to box drain contracts. With them giving contracts to a certain people, and because you give one faction a contract for 250 and another faction a contract for 500,000, the one who get 250 find that they should share in the 500,000. Right? Under his tenure as member of parliament for W. Mirror, you saw an upsurge in murders in places like Karako and Evergreen behind the reach back, where there was a particular religious sect that took over basically those areas where we were hearing reports, some of which still exist today, a practice that still exists today, where they're going into people's homes, that people spent their money, their hard-earned money to build and just putting the people out of their house, right? And when they go to the police to make a report, they're being told, well, here, what? Then we could come and intervene now, but once we go and they will come back and put you out again, and this time they might kill you. So it's better if you want to look, look for a piece of land somewhere else and start over. Start over. This is the kind of thing that happened under him. These were the people who were associated with him. If you went to his, his constituency office on O'Mara Road, by Baker's flag down there where his office was, when you go inside there, you would see the elements that were in there. You would hear people giving, giving reports, and this was some of the things that we heard when I was campaigning in 2013, that when you go to the constituency office, they're closing the doors at four, 
Sometimes you reach the port at a four and they tell you the office closed. When you watch, you look at your watch and you say, but it's not four o'clock yet. Yeah, the office closed. And when you decide to protest, a man will pull, pull a jacket and show you a piece. The office closed. Come back tomorrow. These were the things that, that, that was told to me and my, and my team when we were campaigning. But he wants to take that nastiness, that level of representation, to spoil another constituency like St. Joseph. Where you have certain areas that are, you know, that need some help. Areas that may be susceptible to that type of activity. Where it already exists, but not in, in a significant way. But that he has the potential to go there and, and to magnify that based on how he operates as a member of that The people of St. Joseph had to be crazy out of your minds to, put, to elect him as your next representative. Something had to be wrong with him. Right? In 2020. But that is the misinformation that they spread it. Because he didn't seek to correct the man when he started to speak to tell him, well, no, do you remember the program was the life sport came to an end under Kamla Pasadi Sessa. But this individual, in his mind, in his version of history, and he, he, he he's not no spring chicken, he looked like he could probably be in his 50s or so. So he can remember, I can remember, right? The PNM had nothing to do with bringing that program to an end. That program came to an end long before the PNM came to office in 2015. But that is where they spread. And of course, you will see how many views this will get. And when you read the comments, how many comments, and they praise and they yes, Senator Roberts. Yes, Senator Roberts, we want you back. And yes, Senator Roberts, well said, articulate, and all of that. Right? Massaging his ego based on lies. And he knows full well that the man lied. Or maybe he's just, I don't know. But, you know, and here what he identified. How of life what benefited them? They got a stipend, education, right? Like stipend and education. What education? Math and English. Math and English. Which one man got $34 million to teach? And not a stickature. What did he say? Adolphus Daniel, the late Adolphus Daniel. He was not able to carry out his contract because... The facilities were not provided. They didn't provide the blackboard, the whiteboard, the classrooms. All of these things were not provided. And so therefore, his hands were tied. He couldn't do what he was supposed to do to fulfill his end of the contract because the facilities were not there. When all you have a, a classroom is a tent in the middle of a football field and you're calling that a classroom in the hot sun, the best classroom. But people in the meanwhile get in contract for um, the, 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 the porta potties. Yeah, those portable toilets and so on. How much money to have food for that? Later on in the same, the same clip, he talk about how the, the, the participants were getting two meals a day. They were getting breakfast and lunch and a $1,500 stipend per month. And Faris Al-Rawi had an issue with how much money they were spending on, on, um, on catering because Faris was saying that is um, the school feeding program, you could get two meals at $9.00. And, and they were spending how much ever? Over the course of 18 months, $56 million was spent on catering. $56 million was spent on catering over 18 months. A whole chunk of the $400 million that was spent on life's work. $56 million went to catering in 18 months. And a lot of these students were ghosts. You come and you sign in the morning to say that you were there and then you boss it. And the end of the month, you go and you collect your stipend, your $1,500 stipend check, and whoever you had to give five hundred dollars to, right, for facilitating you, and then you get your, you you get to keep a thousand, but you had to pay your tax, your five hundred. All this bubble was taking place, and he won't have the audacity to come here and big up life sport and this this sufferers or whoever he is. Are you serious? And he on the ground, and this is the stupidness. This is the nonsense that they go in and tell these young people. Eh? And then Robert in St. Joseph, and we know where the St. Joseph constituency, which in those parts of Arangues and so on. You know, they go in and tell this address you. But Anil, Anil had a program called Life Sport because some of these poor at risk youth now, when, when he was minister and when Life Sport existed, right? Some of them were very young, probably in kindergarten or whatever it is. Very young. So the public can't remember. But now he come in to tell them, boy, under Anil had a uh, Life Sport program and they was giving people, young people like yourself, they was getting money to go and learn maths and learn English. And he was getting lunch and thing, and that PNM come and, and stop the program and all of that. And chaining up these young people, help for them to go out and tell the, the cohorts the same nonsense. 
the same lies and propaganda that they spread and they will go out and tell the people that same thing. That is why you have this young man who could have do that video the other day and say, you see what Rowley giving the youth. Rowley agriculture program to go and dig dirt and, and dig trench in the hot sun. So while they last night were beginning up live sport, $1,500 a month stipend and education, learn math and English. Nothing else, just math and English. Yesterday, the Ministry of Youth Development and National Service had another graduation ceremony for another cohort of persons in the youth and agriculture, the homestead program at government campus down on, on Richmond Street. So we have a number of young people between the ages of 18 to 35 who are now one step closer to getting their two acres of land, who are now one step closer to getting um, a deed of lease for the two acres, who are now one step closer to getting a starter home, who are now one step closer to getting the $20,000 to start the agribusiness, to put into practice what they would have learned over the last year or so. So while they all over my line, you know, the PNM are doing nothing for the youth and nothing to help the at-risk youth. And last night, they boasting that on this ridiculous program on the Anil Life Sport. And Life Sport, he had nothing else he could, he could cite. Life Sport and Hope of Life. But let me give all you an idea of some of what if Foster Cummins were to do a similar yeah, program, what Foster could talk about. Let me just remind you all. So let me get it here. As someone just reminded me, the PNM has in my lab, in my path, right? The Youth and Agriculture Shade House, the Homestead Program, and a number of other initiatives, the Empower Program, and so many, so many others. Just now, I, played, I would have played for you all a clip just the other day um, from this guy who goes by the name Ring Leader, who was encouraging young people where you could learn to um, operate a baku, you could learn to operate excavator, crane, yes. Big crane and them, big money, all of these things. You feel he could boast about that? He couldn't talk about that last night because under them, between 2010 to 2015, they didn't have that. None of those programs existed. So we're giving you a $1,500 stipend and you could learn math and English. Right? So you could pull out an application and go to KFC and get work there. Right? So to, not, not, not that I'm saying there's anything wrong with that. But pong for pong. Apples and oranges, is what we're talking about it. So that while if they were to invite the same lady and the Safras, if they were to invite Foster Cummings to their program to speak, Foster could talk more about more than one program. Of that, I am certain. And he could boast that in the last year, you've had over 1,700 young people who have, who have um, graduated from Civilian Conservation Corps with a skill. A skill that they could now turn into a business. So while he boasting under him, life sport, you had 2,700 and something young people who were collecting a stipend of $1,500 a month to learn math and English. Foster Cummins will come and tell you about all the, the variety of programs, who is hairdresser, who is barber, who is plumber, who is mason, who could do refrigeration and, and fix uh, air conditioner and all these different things. Under MIC, under the, the, uh, the culinary arts program, where they're learning to cook. They're learning to make things like cheesecake and all of these different things. I we were posted up some a few months ago a picture of 11 young people with 11 cheesecakes in front of them, which they baked. How many of us listening here could bake a, a cheesecake? How many of us? When we feel like for cheesecake, we had to go down by Adam's Bagels or wherever it is you want to get your cheesecake. But soon enough, hopefully, these young people, when they finish and they graduate, will come together and they could open a bakery. Like these high-end bakeries that we have and these bageries and so on. Things like Maria's Bakery and Adam's Bagels and all of that. Where it is that you have persons of a certain help will frequent and they're making money. There was a feature just recently on the owner of Adam's Bagels. That when he came back home in 1990 from wherever he was abroad and so on and his business, whatever business he was in that was destroyed. The coup. And his father asked him, based on what was reported, well, what other business you want to And he wasn't inclined to go into business. But eventually, he, started to, he decided to start this, this bagelry. And today, they're doing extremely well. And they only have one outlet. But you know what? They're making things like pepper sauce and, and, um, and garlic sauce and all of these different things and selling it in massy stores and places like peppercorns and all of these different things. And they're making money, plenty money. So this administration is giving these same young people that opportunity, not just to go and learn maths and English, to add and subtract 
and to learn how to pronounce your THs. That is what they were offering them. Nothing with respect to starting a business. So you get a certificate, you get a nice graduation ceremony in Crown Plaza or whatever it is, the Radisson. And after that, what are you going to do with that certificate? Just to say, right, I learned, now I know how to count. I couldn't before. Now I know how to speak, well, proper English. I could spell. And I could make out my name on a piece of paper now. That was the sum total. But based on that graduation that took place yesterday, and I, when you listen to the valedictorian and talk about all the experiences that they had down in Centeno and so on, where they were learning, um, not just, it's not just about digging dirt and digging trenches, that poor misguided young man mentioned. Other things, right, with respect to animal husbandry and all of these, and she, she described it as an adventure, nothing short of an adventure. And she did it on a part-time basis, eh? So the people who are doing it full-time, all the different things that they learned, she spoke about, they also learned agro-processing. So if it is that they want to go and dig dirt and plant yam and dashing and sweet potato and stuff, it's not just when you reap it to go in the market and put it up on a stall and, and calling people to come and buy. They are being taught now, how can you turn this thing into something else that you could package and put in a 20-foot container and send it to, to North America, send it to Canada, send it to Europe. That is what they are learning. And they're getting a stipend too. Hands-on. This administration is looking, when you finish, you must start your own business. Don't be looking to send out no resume and to send us a, a copy of a certificate so that you could get a job. No, you must be in a position. You must be looking for to read through resumes that are sent to you as you're looking for people to start your business. That is what this administration is about. But this disgusting individual will come and talk about nothing for the youth and life sport and how life sport, if, if it wasn't for life sport, only two people, two young men were killed under life sport, but had it not been for the life sport, that would have been about two to, hundred, to 400 young people would have been killed. And how many of them life sport seen? How many of them who benefited from life sport through contracts of, for a variety of things are today behind bars? How many of them are behind bars today? I'm going to call no name, but it's on Hansard. Jack, when I read it out, you could go and see it for yourself. Some of them names get called up in Dina Sita Hall murder and all. They're behind bars today. How many people get locked up under the homestead program? Hmm? How many people get locked up under the, 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 the shade program? You hear any of them? How many people get killed? But this is a wicked and evil PNM government. Anton says these young people graduated yesterday. They need to come out and tell their stories. I agree with you. And I would like to see, I'll try and see if I reach out to the, the ministry or the minister and see what, what we could do. Um, but on Sunday, I'll probably play the, 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 the valedictory speech of the young lady, just about six or seven minutes. But very inspiring when you listen to that. These are the things that need to be played so that other young people, instead of them seeing TikTok video, that a man cussing Dr. Rowley because that is all he could offer. But you're praising live sport. But today, I, I don't know how many persons would have graduated yesterday because I know each cohort is supposed to be around 200 people. Not everybody may remain in the program or so. But I'll try and see if I get, I was listening to see if I got the exact figure. I'm not too sure um, what it was. But based on when Mr. Cummings invited the participants to get up, um, to stand and be recognized and applauded for sticking it through, for signing up for the program, right? It was a significant number of young people. And that is just one of the many programs that the Ministry of Youth Development has that these young people are benefiting from. Just one. Let me see if I find another one here. Give me one sec. I saw it last night. Let's see. Let me get it here. So they have YTEP. Transform your life. Classes start September 2024. Applications are open. Youth training 15 to 35 years old. Barber stylist, bartending, beauty therapy, bread cakes, and pastry making. Building electrician's assistant. Cake making and decorating. Care for the elderly. Child care attendant. Computer graphic artist. Dressmaking and design, events decorating, food preparation, graphic design, hairdressing, household furnishing, micro entrepreneurship online, nail tech, office assistant, patient care assistant, plumbing, tailoring, tour guide. The CWFP industrial programs for persons 60 to 50 years, get 60 to 16 to 50 years old, advanced welding and fabricating, welding level, heavy structural fabricating and basic welding, light aluminum fabrication. Rotating equipment maintenance and repair, ship and industrial maritime repair, ship and industrial maritime repair. You all understand the significance of that? Right now, we have a issue with the carry dock. We know that 
would, it would have sunk, right? David Lee making a big hullabaloo about how much the government spending to um for this this foreign entity to be doing the the maintenance on and, and providing um dry docking facilities and so on. But when when the, the government has I know put out an RFP for the establishment of a new dry docking facility. So when that comes on street, they're looking for workers. You see what it says here? Ship and industrial maritime repair. So they are creating. They, they're providing you with the skills now so that when it is that facility comes back on stream, they're looking for workers. You have the skill. You trained. You could now go. So they're thinking ahead to create. And, and these jobs and pay is not two cents. This is not $20 an hour we're talking about here. Valve maintenance and repair. 16 to 60 years. Here, at Institute of Culinary Arts, Practical Cafeteria Operations, the Institute of Cosmetology, Barbarin, aesthetics here, addressing nail technology. Then they go on to say retraining for retrenchment and unemployed and underemployed persons between the ages of 25 to 60 years. Agro-processing, barbering, digital marketing, drafting and construction, radio broadcasting, electrician in electrical installation, fabric design, facilities maintenance, fashion design, fiber optics, garment construction, general office administration. I was recently told by someone that um, we have a shortage of persons who know how to sew and, 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 and to stitch. The Ministry of Trade is looking for persons to help put, develop persons in these skill sets. We have people who are great in garment design, they can design, but they, they don't know how to use, how to even thread a needle. And here it is that you have courses being offered under this administration through the Ministry of Youth Development and National Service, and for persons as old as 60 years, grow box, heavy machinery, hydroponics. General pesticide management, plumbing, media sales and marketing, security camera installation and troubleshooting, steel pan tuning, media and television production. So they're not looking to put you out of pasture when you reach 60 years. But you have people who complain that well, they want to extend the retirement age to 65 and they want people to wait till they're 65 to get a pension. In the United States, the, the, in order to, the, the full retirement age is 67. 67 at present, and right now you have the Republican controlled house talking about extending that retirement age to an even later date, past 67. But we ripe in here from 60 to 65, we have a problem with that. But half earlier, when all, working in all your good job, when you reach 60, you're feeling young and healthy, you are ready to go home. But you want them to tell you, well, here, well, this is what it is, 60, pack your jahaji bundle. We don't care that you're strong and fit and you're going to work another five years. Buss it. Go home. Go and play with your grandchildren. Right? But you see, we like to latch on to these things because it, it yeah, without thinking. So, let me see, how about another one here? Let me just, let me just get this here. Let me see if I find this here. So. Mm -hmm. Right, there was something else I wanted to touch on. What's the time here? Okay. So many things to talk about. I need to leave some for um, for Sunday. That's one. Right. Let me see if I find this one. Where is it? I think. I'm play over this one. Your job as an RV entrepreneur just got so much easier. The Ministry of Agriculture Land and Fisheries is offering an RV incentive grant to all licensed wood workers, so millers, farmers fishermen and employed agriculture workers so you can have an opportunity to further your business to hundred thousand dollars this is all part of the government's initiative to increase food security in Trinidad and Tobago while diversifying the economy last week the ministry invested five million dollars in 50 recipients of the Alberts and the grant here's how you could be the next one First, you have to go and check out the Ministry of Agriculture's website and click the Agro Incentive Grant on the grant initiatives. Copy the application form and submit it to any one of the Agricultural Development Bank branches. It must be accompanied by evidence of land tenure, the registration with the ministry, the business plan, and experience in agriculture. Once the application form is submitted and reviewed, all successful applicants will be contacted. So it's all new. Ready to secure agribusiness to the next level? To whom is only opportunity to secure new agricultural technologies and equipment. Send it to someone who needs it. Send it to someone who needs it. Hmm. It was the UNC equivalent of that. 
and the robots could talk about anything like that. Okay. Um, let's see. Where is it? I'm looking at the time. I'll talk about everything I wanted to talk about today. This here. This one. Right. Right. I'm gonna leave some other person. Hold on, hold on. I'm ready. Just one. Let me just touch on one more thing. Right. Let me just let me just let this open, right? Eh? Heritage Commission's new offshore oil well. Heritage Petroleum Company Limited has commissioned offshore oil well S938, representing a significant milestone in its field development efforts. The company made the announcement in a media release on Monday. S938 is located within the Soldado East Field and has an expected average daily rate of 500 barrels of oil per day. Heritage said the new oil well promises to contribute significantly to its revenue. S938 is the third well to be put into production after Heritage began its offshore drilling program, in line with the company's strategy to grow high-margin production. Drilling of the well began in August 2023, and after rigorous design and engineering efforts, the top sides were completed in March 2024. Requisite inspections and statutory approvals followed prior to commissioning. Chief Executive Officer at Heritage, Eric Keskula, thank those who work to ensure the safe delivery of production from S938. And he added, over the next month, we will operate the well with a goal of optimizing fluid production rates to maximize oil, reco to maximize oil recovery and cash flow. Keskula noted that S938 has a strategic role in developing a track record of delivering new offshore wells and facilities to increase production. Anticipating ongoing benefits from the new well, the company noted that three additional wells are expected to be commissioned in the coming months. So they've done three before, right? And another three coming on stream. The further wells are part of heritage expansion of its offshore drilling program, which will continue in the third quarter of 2024. The company restated its commitment to operational excellence, environmental stewardship, and delivering returns to all stakeholders, including the government and the citizens. That is good news. We have heritage who have been declaring significant profits as well. And now we are hearing that they are commissioning new offshore oil wells. So they will be finding new oil. And then this one, this one well alone, at least on, from the outside, we'll be talking at 500 barrels of oil. You know, the supporters of that party have an issue with that. You know, they have an issue with 500. I, I saw one comment a man put, I know a man who does, um, who does, who, who could, what is boy? There's P more than that. So 500 barrels, this is in addition. So production, only time we hear in production declining, production decline. Now we have at least six new oil wells coming on street with an average of about 500 barrels of oil per day. So you're looking at six by five, 3,000, an additional 3,000 barrels of oil per day. They have a problem with that. Remember when the same Eric Kestula came to head up Heritage? The only thing the opposition could have find to talk about was the fact that Mr. Kesquila was a white man. And if Rowley, who is the, 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 the leader of the African PNM party, if he couldn't find no black person in Trinidad to get a walk, to, to be the head of, of heritage. Now, this is somebody who is international, right? This is an, Mr. Mr. Kesquila came from wherever. When you read his resume, it is, yeah, it, it's impressive when you look at some of the other companies that he's worked for. And he chose to come to Trinidad and to be one. He is applying his international experience uh, to what we see now. And this is just six wells. Three more to come on stream very soon. And we expect to see more as he continues to lead the company. But they have an issue. 500 is not enough. They're studying one well. But not the fact that we're looking at at least six in the first instance by 500, 3,000 barrels of oil per day. You all remember, what did they offer us when they were in office? You all remember they talk about the 48 million barrels of oil that they found in Soldado. When Lindsay Gillett, Khalid Hassan Ali, came and sat down in a post-cabinet press briefing, and they come with a vial with some oil and say, sweet crude, look, yes, 48 million barrels. Whatever happened to that? Whatever happened to that 48 million barrels of oil that they told us about in 2012? We ever got it? I'm going to read something here for you. 
Yo, you know I love you. Yes. President, Petrotrin looking for oil in French Guyana. This is after they announced they found 48 million barrels of oil of Soldado, right? Okay. Yes. Come in, I hear. Hold on. Good news for oil company. Petrotrin president designate. A profitable mix of heavy and light crude oil spells big things for both the energy sector and the downstream industries, as Petrotrin's president designate Khaled Hassan Ali said yesterday. This is the, 20, the 28th of March, 2012. Some 48 million barrels of crude were discovered in shallow water wells just off the coast of Point Fortin last year. The find took weeks to test and confirm, and by yesterday, Hassan Ali was describing the find as the best in the last 10 years. We have a combination of heavy oil, which is very viscous, and the lighter crude. The, light, the lighter oil can be used to dilute the heavy oil, so when you make that type of combination, you get a new composite crude, Hassan Ali said. Hassan Ali was speaking at a special post-cabinet session focusing only on the find at the weekly press conference at the office of the Prime Minister. And though all, here is, eh? though all cabinet members were present for the announcement, the Prime Minister and the Energy Minister, Kevin Ramnarain, led the entire team out of the room before the media were permitted to ask any questions. Hassan Ali and Petrochin Chairman Lindsay Gillett stayed on to answer questions with three other company representatives. So you come to announce your fine 48 million barrels of oil, some light crude and whatnot and blah, blah. You have a post-cabinet conference. The prime minister was there when he made the announcement. And when come time for the media to ask questions, the prime minister and the minister of energy led the entire cabinet out of the room and leave Lindsay Gillette and Khaled Hassan Ali to answer questions. So what? The country didn't want to hear from the prime minister. They didn't want to hear from the minister of energy. The man who now boasted that he did so much when he was Minister of Energy. And under him, the, the energy sector flourished, according to he. But he left the room, ain't feeling no questions. That is what they offered. Feeling no questions. Why don't you come and you sit down in the room? Or you leave. And leave them too. Hear what? The toilet? You leave the toilet to lie. Right? So that when this thing don't pan out, they can't come and say, we see. So we will say, well, ask Lindsay Gillette and ask Khaled Hassan Ali. Because it's them telling it. We weren't in the room when all they asked questions, right? So if it's not to be a lie, blame them. Not me, not Kevin, and not any member of the cabinet. Whatever happened to that 48 million? Hassan Ali said the combination of light and heavy crude was good news for state owned petrol for the point of pay refinery. Listen to this, sir. Eh? We are at a stage where the refinery is a lot more versatile where the appetite for crude import and the ability to manufacture the types of products that the Caribbean and local economy take. He said the find would also increase the local production profit margins. The refinery capacity at 150,000 barrels per day, um, but only 50,000 came from the local fields, while the other 100,000 was imported at prices that are subject to freight. Yeah, that was for the benefits of the UNC supporters. Local production, 50,000 barrels, and they were importing 100,000 barrels every day at prices that included freight. But Petrochina is making money, and Petrochina is a foreign, a foreign exchange generator. Therefore, the higher the proportion of the indigenous crude, it will enhance our profitability. Meaning, the less oil that we have to import, and the more that we could get from domestic production, would improve Petrochina's profits. But as it stands right now, we are importing more than we than we produce in locally, and it's affecting Petrochin's profit margins. But them don't want to hear that because under Petro, because Petrochin was the best thing since side bread, and Petrochin wasn't depending on the state for no help and no all right. This is the, this is what I wanted to stress on. And this is Kassan, Hassan Ali speaking here. Petrochin does not sell raw crude. Petrochin does not sell raw crude, but refined products. And Hassan Ali said for every single Petrochin employee, a further 20 people in various downstream sectors would profit from such a find. Petrochin does not sell raw crude. So all who thought Petrochin was making money from selling oil, Khaled Hassan Ali is telling us Petrochin does not sell raw crude. So any oil that Petrochin found, to exploration and production, which under Petrotrin was a department, today an entire company called Heritage. They were not selling that crude. That crude was going to the refinery to be used for refined products that they were making or arm. Um, 
the different fuels. The regular fuel, the regular fuel and the super and the and the diesel and all of these different things and other byproducts with bitumen and all of these different things. But they weren't selling crude. But they want to come now, they vex. Because for the first time in a long time, we are seeing and we are hearing heritage, previously petrochem, is telling us of new oil finds. So they're not just sitting down and waiting for the government to go and talk to BP and Shell and EOG and Touchstone and negotiate with them to come and bring your equipment and bring your resources and dig and find oil and then pay us taxes and royalties. The refinery is no longer in operation. So you know what is the difference today? Petrotrin is now selling raw crude. Unlike what obtained, as you heard Khalil Hassanari mentioned just now, between 2010 to 2015, under the old model, any oil that Petrotrin owned and found, whether it was through exploration and production through their lease operators and the farm out um, program, which would involve people like AB drilling and so on, which would have gone to the refinery, today Petrotrin sells raw crude. And I recall at some time, when Franklin Khan was still Minister of Energy and he was speaking about the, the better prices that because of the type of crew that we have and what it is being used for, that they were fetching better prices for it. But we sell and we actually know under this new model, we sell in oil. We weren't selling it before because the, the production that was coming from BP and Shell and these other companies, that is what was being sold. Because they bid, they have their acreage and any oil that they find, they sell. And they weren't selling it to the refinery. They were selling it on the external market. But Petrotrin's oil was going to the refinery. Now, Petrotrin is selling oil in the external market, just like the other players, the BP and the Shell and the EOG and the Touchstone and all of them. And Heritage is making money. But they had a problem with that model. Keep the refinery open. We're only producing 50,000 50, barrels of, of oil per day. But the... Refinery has a throughput of 180,000 barrels. So we will import 100 to 120, 130,000 barrels at whatever the price of oil is. And imagine that we make in for every barrel of oil that we use to refine, to create diesel and super and regular and whatever else it is, we lose in five US per barrel. And that making sense to them. And petro chain and petro chain and petro chain. Totally clueless. But I wanted to talk about Brent Thomas. I will leave Brent Thomas for Sunday, right? And all of the defenders of Brent Thomas, we will talk about that and the latest development where the Barbados government has decided to accept liability for that incident involving Mr. Thomas. But our attorney general here has made the point that what happened in Barbados has no impact on what is happening here in our local courts with respect to that matter. So don't expect any capitulation on his part or the part of the government of Trinidad and Tobago to invite Mr. Thomas's attorneys to come and, and, and send any, any letter with regarding to how much compensation they want. Barbados is Barbados, but we will talk about that on Sunday. Right? We had time to talk about that, because that is another hour and some, just to deal with that alone. And the hypocrisy of all of the de facto defenders of Mr. Mr. Thomas, ranging from Gary Griffith to um, the Douglaia and Mrs. Posad de Sessa and the rest of them, we will deal with them on Sunday. Seven seven zero one seven six three. Just get this. Just give me one second. Hold on. Let me just switch devices here. Hello, good afternoon. <laughs> Mr. Leave it there. <laughs> I am good. I understand today is your birthday. If what? You were but I will people tell me on, on my life. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> you having a big, your, your sister throwing a big party for you? Oh, okay, okay. Oh, yes, I forget the holidays here, not by you all. 
Yes, you are going to the money to the party. Oh, okay. <laughs> what mischief? What mischief you call for? You call with today. I have not much more trouble for me to tell you. Uh huh. But it's not too fast. Hmm. It's not going to be too late. Most of the information. What is my last statement? Uh huh. What is my last statement? I can't stop my pain. I hear what you say. Song a little more full then. Yeah, I'm hearing some noise in the background. Yeah, I don't know why you're singing like you're underwater. No, I don't know. I hear the air pushing. Eh. All right. Let's move on then. Hmm. Before the virus came this year. Before the virus came on the scene, yes. We had a tourist boat that we had to port into the scene. Right. We had a tourist boat that we had to port into the scene. We had a tourist boat that we had to port into the scene. Right. We had a tourist boat that we had to port into the scene. Right. We had a tourist boat that we had to port into the scene. I barely understand what you're saying, but I'm right. You had to change that food. This is my last Sunday. You what? I'm going to call you back next Sunday. All right. You had to use this stuff for one man. I'm struggling to understand. All I hear was the tourist boat. Some tourists put that came in. Hello, good afternoon. Good morning, Dom. How are you? Hi, hi, I'm good. You know something? Thank God for you, Dominic. Thank God for who you are. Thank God for your your your, your tenacity and and the way you put your life. I am listening to you and doing house, okay? So about yeah. the power. Uh-huh. It's a break. It's a team that's both in my heart. Mm. When you hear the constant lies and slanders of the cheap yellow pouch, that mm-hmm. hell kick out, right? And it's constant lies, eh? not just every single day. And nobody hold them on their back to the Call him a truth. It's pathetic and it's evil. So they man the lie for okay? And what the lies that he spewed? Ina Roberts the correct him. Why is that? Hmm. So if you know something is wrong, you know, correct it. He says, you don't love the country, you, know. you love the power. It's not about party, it's about party rather, not nation. Because a nation builder, a civic minded person, and a citizen will always put party for ego. He's arrogant and ignorant the same breath. If they know your word, they'll stay in Royal Castle, okay? Two sort different of entities, one is local, one is foreign. Okay? They compete. But each restaurant has the time, they're not so. Mm-hmm. So if you and see all that, why do you lie? Why do you stand? Why do you hate? Why do you want to be Why? Who cares if I talk at BBC? How do you want to be in would you be seeing in the line of, 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 of fire? How do I went 2020? Would you be seeing line of fire? No. Hmm. ABC, thank you for the vote. Thank you for the, making us win. So if they win in 2025, would the two be different? The two will be different, you know? Hmm. It's something else because they won. ABC is going to pay them in pocket. Because they accused the ABC now, in 2010, they'll accuse them then. Why now? Mm-hmm. Because they're lost. 
It says that UNC is a gun. A gun needs backup. A gun will always lie and slander and kill and malign because they have nothing else in their pocket. In the modus operandi, lie, lie, and more lie. They are, I'll keep saying this, the UNC is the Jim Jones in Brooklyn Arena. Bring the Kool-Aid. Mm. It's yellow juice. It's curry mango and curry can't drink it now, children. She opened the door, she goes to hell, and she's up in. And she pointed us over the sheep. People hear me well. If you go to your feet, you will the stick. You hate yourself. Right? One person wrong in, in, in Panama's money is long deceased. Okay? You have Ram, you have David Lee, who is chief whip. Who is it wrong? Right? You have two criminals, right? Ram went up for um, election last year, but it's not wrong. Fraudly on a charge, but it's not wrong. To be a UNT person, you must love crime, you must hit a nation, and put party for nation. So I'm have a good day. Bye bye later. You too. Thank you much. Thank you. 7701763. Hmm. Altia says, Yes, heritage is making money, and that's why we have to keep the out of the treasure. Let's see here. So, um, Hello, good afternoon. Dominic. Yes, sir. Are you hearing me better now? 100% better. Wonderful. All right. Let's, let's start from the top. I'm going to spang along. Uh -huh. Now, before the virus came on the scene, mm -hmm. we had a tourist boat that came in the port in Port of Spain. Uh -huh. A husband and wife tourists were sitting on a bench around the savannah, around by Junanon Avenue. Mm -hmm. A man ran up on them with a knife, stabbed or cut the wife, snatched the purse, and he gone with it. Mm -hmm. Countries started putting out advisories on Trinidad, telling their people, don't go beat them, Sila, Lavanti, and listen to this part, Dominic. They told their people, do not go around the savannah. Mm -hmm. Do not go around the savannah. Dr. Rowley just spent a bag of money fixing up those buildings around the savannah. Mm -hmm. The Magnificent Seven. Uh -huh. And they told their people, do not go around the savannah. Dr. Rowley and Dennis Moses Minister of Foreign Affairs at the time, ain't said nothing about that. Dominic, they ain't said nothing about that situation at the place. Dominic, remember where I stopped. Uh -huh. I will leave it there for now. Uh -huh. Thank you, sir. Well, I would, I, my comment on that would be, first of all, um, the... One second, Jan. Now, to the best of my knowledge, you said around when the, before the pandemic came on the scene and so on. Right. So after the pandemic came, which would have been 2020, March, the borders were closed. So the borders were not reopened until July of 2021. So no tourists could have been coming here anyway between 2020, March and July of 2021 to see, um, to see the Magnificent Seven. Um, in addition to which, the most of those projects would have been completed sometime around 2020, 
and after. In fact, the, the most recent one would be the residence of the um, Anglican Archbishop or the Anglican Bishop, Claude Berkeley, or the Anglican community. That's the most recent one, which is neighbor to Neil Fleur, which is the headquarters of the, the National Trust. And the official opening of the National Trust of Neil Fleur would have taken place sometime around August of 2020 after it was completed. Um, when this administration came in in 2015, in fact, there was contemplation to demolish the building because it was in such a state of disrepair, and it, a decision was taken to bring in Cuban architects and Cuban rest, um, restoration experts who came in and they were able to save it. And I can tell you, um, as recent as sometime in the middle of last year, the National Trust would have held an event at, at Millfield, or was it early last year, where we would have invited the U.S. Ambassador Candice Bond, and the then charge affair, Mr. Um, Shanti Moore, and Mr. Moore would have come, and in discussions with Mr. Moore, he would have um, indicated to me, because you recall for a period of time, he was in fact the head of mission in the absence of an ambassador, substantive ambassador, following the departure of, of Joseph Mondello, and Mr. Moore would have told me how much he enjoys bringing his family to <coughs> out on a Sunday, just to walk that stretch from the Ministry of, of Foreign Affairs, which was previously the Ministry of Agriculture, go all the way down to um, Queen's Royal College. And he says there's just something whenever, and whenever foreign dignity or dignitaries from the US comes, this is what Mr. Moore told me, this is last year. He makes it a point always to take them to see that, to observe, because he says there's something, this is his words, there's something magical about that stretch going all the way around to President's house. And in fact, the Prime Minister had indicated when he met with, um, sometime in January of 2020, when he had met with um, representatives, uh, well, the, the Council of the National Trust, he met with the architects of the President's house and persons from Unicot, and he said he wanted to have that entire area declared as a heritage district, and he was working on, on having that happen, subsequent to the completion of, of the restoration of all of those buildings. But Mr. Moore, who was head of mission for a number of years, would have indicated to me that he and his family love Trinidad. And you see that stretch, that Savannah stretch there from the roundabout Queens Royal, go all the way around to the president's house, that he just loves to come out there. Any chance he gets, he brings his son when he has to come out and walk. And when people come from the US, US government officials, he have always made it a point to bring them to look at those, those buildings, right? So I just thought I'd make mention of that. Um, leave it there. So, anyway, let me see. Jenny. Hi, Dominic. Good afternoon. Hi, hi. You hear me properly? Loud and clear. Aid Mubarak to the Muslim company. Hear me company, the <laughs> community. community. Yes. And to all those who are locked down to facts and stubborn things. Leave it there is a very unhappy man. <laughs> and the only joy he does get in my opinion, is when you call the radio and your programs and people give him that type of recognition because I don't think he would have been recognized otherwise. Over about two weeks ago, there was a whole contingent of tourists, about 40 of them, walking through the botanical garden. Hmm. How did they reach there? The Maxis had to pass right in front of all those buildings. They would have stopped and taken pictures and get back in and walk in through the botanical gardens. So I don't know what foolishness it is that leave it there always like to come and be talking all the time. And sometimes, you know, it will be so tiresome. Start to listen to a pack of retro. But again, if that is what brings him joy, I guess he'll keep doing what he's doing. So I will leave that there. Dominic, in this country, there are some people who will never, no matter what you say, understand what you're saying, or have anything good to say about this country, or about the People's National Movement of Dr. Rowley, or the achievements that this PNM government, since the inception of Dr. Eric, Eric Williams, when he would have founded this party, they will never have anything good to say, and sometimes you have to leave them alone. Because I want to tell them, especially some of Indian descent in this country, who are always trying to stir up racial tension, 
that had it not been for Dr. Equilem and the philosophies and ideologies of the People's National Movement about inclusion, um, including, um, including all ethnic groups, nationalism, pride, no matter Africa, no matter India, no matter China. I mean, and if they held on to those concepts, you wouldn't be looking to build this country. And he says, only mother, Trinidad and Tobago. They don't understand that. In Guyana, or not Chedi Jagan, the amount of racial tension and violence that erupted between the Indians and the African in Guyana, it has never happened in this country. Even Chedi Jagan had also called Dr. Ekunem to try to help with the type of killings and murders because of racial violence was happening in Guyana. But again, it failed because Chedi Jagan ideology was not one like Dr. Equilem. All those British officials who were in this country would have said to Dr. Equilem's credit. Had he not been the type of leader with the philosophies and ideas he had, we'd have ended up just like Guyana. They always give him the rise above the local politics and would have assessed what he would have done in this country in a fair manner. And I think that would have made persons, some of the innocent, even more angry because I think they wanted here to be a mother India. Because they think to substantiate what I say, you know, HP Singh, the biggest racist in this country, Harry Passat Singh, he was back in the days of Tim Bonat and them when this country, under Dr. Ram, Eric Miller, was trying to get independence from England. They were fighting against that because they felt it would have been better if the white man ruled this country than a black man, if they power to a black man. And he wrote a book that spoke about separating Trinidad across the Caribbean bridges for Indians and across the first corridor for Africans. That is the most racist and dangerous piece of literature that has ever been written. But you know what is even worse? They continue to teach their devotees in the temples and the illiterate Indians at that time, spreading in their head this ideology of India and not Trinidad and Tobago, and telling them somehow that the Africans in the country that were against them. That is what they were doing. If you want to come further into the 1990-something, there was a whole group of them left from across the Kiami Bridge, a whole village that cut off themselves from the rest of Trinidad. And I think they call the community Hindustan. They left here in droves and went to Canada, same political victimization. And they joined up with another group of Indians with that type of philosophy. I could even go further. When they went to Canada, saying African men, Rasta men raping Indian women. And when Canada did their, their research, it was found that it's Indian men putting on Rasta wig and raping Indian women. Because coming out of that, he had to have visa to go to Canada. And recently, another doctor, King Christopher Rowley, those restrictions have been lifted. I go a little further. One of the one MP, who will see Bagan, would have encouraged Indian people in her constituency to form vigilante groups to carry out violence against African people. It was endorsed by her, and they did form it. So when they want to talk about racial harmony, if it wasn't for the People's National Movement, we'd have descended into chaos. They want to talk about CNM as racist, but if it wasn't for the CNN government, they would have never have what some of them have. Till they come in today to tell we, CNN will give them more than they give we. And that is not the truth. If I want talking about the PNM gave money to build the Hindu school. It was money the Hindu school. The Cohen Hamilton High School, the Baptist Secondary School, down in South down there. PNM gave money to build that. All the denominational schools. They give money to build those things. So when you're talking about like you know the PNM money gave money to the Indians and they got the Indians and not the Africans. That is not true. Education was universal for all. And we know how that went. 
we know the opportunities in this country well because when they came here in 1845, they met a, a middle class of African persons and mulattoes, who were solicitors, doctors, lawyers, teachers, everything. And they want to know why they want to stay now with the bottom because here was when Dr. Williams was speaking about nationalism, all of us are one. African people understood what it is to be a nation. And they told the little Indians, they give, they show them the work, how to do it, they teach them trade everything because we are building Trinidad and Tobago. It wasn't Mother African, Mother Indian, Mother China, it was Mother Trinidad and Tobago. But you know what some of them would do it? They take all the knowledge. And still keep in the head is Mara India. And here must be like India. So you want to know why it is with the bottom of because when they get in position, and they two for that, you know, some of them when they get into position, they turn their back on the Africans who would have helped them and start to help their own now because it's an individual thing. We heard what Dr. Motolomi said about in UWE there with the doctors um, where doctors are going in UWE to study medicine. When the protesters try to apply, people who are worthy of it, they couldn't get in. And when he did this investigation, it showed that there was racism in the way that they were choosing persons to go to the university to do medicine. Our children, African children, had to go to Grenada in St. George's College um, University, I mean, to study medicine. It wasn't African people doing African people that. It was some of Indian descent doing that. So when I want to talk about we to the bottom, Ask what part some of them would have had to play in the situation that African people find themselves. I'm not saying that we are void of responsibilities, but let us be real. If we were thinking about national and villain Trinidad and Tobago, and some of them are only thinking about villain here as India to join the Guyana with racism and Suriname, how we expect there to be equality. When they get, they fight we don't. So that we don't have. And I'm not saying it's all Indians, because it can't be all of everything. But some of them, and they know themselves, would have never believed in Trinidad and Tobago as one state, one mother. They always hold on to the Indian side of the thing. But you know the sad part as I am? Ask any of them who does, who does um, for the vacation, if they don't ever go in there for the vacation. Ask them who does leave here and go vacation. They still love India. Ask them who does go there for vacation. Do you want to talk about me? Plenty of Africans around the globe will be flying to Ghana, Nigeria for, um, for vacation, South Africa for vacation. So why why they the really want some truth? The ones that say they're so proud and they're so superior than we, some of them, but they want more land. They didn't want to go back there because they know they go back there. They will not be considered and able to behave the way that they'll behave in Trinidad. So they want to turn Trinidad, in my opinion, in a little India. But the PNM will never allow that. And the right thinking person in this country will never allow that. Because here it's Trinidad and Tobago. This is not India, this is not China, Syria, or, or Africa. We are all here because of all the time we came on different ships, different conditions, which could be discussed another time. But we have to build this together. And the person who seems to be fighting this the most is the opposition. And they said that UN is an Indian party. I didn't say so. So let us check the self with us. It's a love at the end of the day. All races together. Build in this country. Thank you, Dominic. Thank you, Jen. Hello, good afternoon. Hello. Hello. Dominic. Yes, sir. Let me tell you the next part. Uh huh. Jenny, I told Dominic there's two parts. You must wait for the second part before you jump in the dance. Dominic. Yes, sir. Dr. Rowley went to Bego. Uh huh. You can remember the husband and wife tourists that got beaten up on the beach and robbed? Yes, I can. Satmaraj spoke about it. Dominic? Mm -hmm. Dr. Rowley said, Jenny, listen carefully. Dr. Rowley said, Oh, 
I am so disturbed. And what things like that could do to our tourism. Shall I repeat that or say it again before the close the door? Mm -hmm. Dr. Rowley say, oh, I am so disturbed. And what things like that could do to our tourism in Tobago. But when it happened in Trinidad, and countries were putting out advisories on Trinidad, Dr. Rowley and Dennis Moses and say a word about that. Jenny, you can talk now. Dominic, I will leave it here. Even if I am certain that that is not accurate with respect to Dr. Rowley's position on any attacks on tourists in general. But we will deal with that on another day. Eric. Eric. <laughs> Good afternoon to you, Mr. Yes, Dominic Romain. Good afternoon Greetings. to all the, the, the followers and the listeners of Facts versus, of, um, sorry, Facts and Stubborn Things. Let me take this opportunity to wish all the Muslim brothers and sisters in the country with Mubarak, and I hope that Allah shower your blessings on you all. This call, I can't leave it there. Like you have to bank I with Dr. Rowdy or something, or what? You call back, I still, you, you call back. To continue the Guba you're talking just now. The case you know, is only in Trinidad and Tobago that tourists that, that fall victims of crime. It happens all over the world, living there. I think you should ask us to start in America what takes place in America regarding tourists. Right? You see, all of us want to portray that. This country is so wicked and bad under the Dr. Roddy Lair administration. Because, because all they cannot say, well, okay, yeah, because she was good at the camera. No, you understand? Everything, people, everything, nitpick, 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 is Dr. Roddy, is Ms. Hines, is the government, is this, is that, is the other. You know why? Because all they don't like progression. Or they like to see things go a certain way. They want to live in a dependency syndrome. And Dr. Rowley is trying to get the citizens of this Twin Island Republic out of that state of mind. This dependency syndrome. You yeah, understand? So, Dominic, all you see who cussing and, we, and have all manner of nothing good to say, right? About this administration and the progression, right? It goes to show that only not patriotic to this country. So only rather a bunch of kleptomaniacs, right? That ravaged this that ravaged this country in the last five years, three months, and 14 days. So come in my faith, 14 years later, going to 15 years, to so tell me. To put you back there because you was the best thing that ever happened to the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago in the last 62 years this year. Are you telling me that? Really? Huh? I know you play a, a voice at um a recording with Anna, Anna Roberts talking about um oh they have 19, they have 19 short seats and um Tobago have two. Mm -hmm. And Pierre will have 20. You see, you see, when you misinform Dominic and you don't understand how the political landscape operates in this country, you tend to talk as a Gubar. Yes, and he watching the THA election, right? As a means of the general election. THA election is THA election. General election is general election. Yes, and if you tell me, all right, well, you know, Pali had two seats with us. He's the, he, um, he's the, um, well, TPP or whatever you call them, to the people party, right? If them is the, is the, um, holding these seats currently, I will say, all right, PNM are 20, 20 are 19, and the two in Tobago. All right. You understand? But don't come and try to hogwash me and telling me, 
that Fali has been too into Bego. So what, Olya, Olya are, are, are predicting or strategizing that the Tolle paper-led party by Fali that all of being talks to 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 to, um, to join a coalition. God forbid that if that time comes around, but all it still need a good few seats again to form a government because if only have twenty and the two, which party I think would I don't know I I, I might be wrong, right? To join it all after all this mash up TOP, right? So it goes to show, it really goes to show. But they talking about that. Why they talk about Shogunas East, Moruga Tableland, and Barataria Saria? Eh? Right now in Barataria Saria, the current MP for that area, who's at UNC MP, he's losing favorability and grounds in Barataria Saria. But he ain't, he ain't none of them talking about that. Right? Vandana who hit. Who, who is the MP for Shogunas East? Losing grounds in Shogunas East. They hear them talking about that. Moruga Tableland, who owned my, by um, Bontaya Benjamin, should be going in that area. They hear them talking about that. Or you're coming to talk about, or they, sure, they have 19 seats, and only you, you need two and, and 24 seats, and the Dr. Royal have 17, and da 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 you understand what I'm telling you? But you see, that is why they're not thinking because they, they, do, they do the inside poll and they realize who the target and where the target. But I know my people in this country are level head thinkers. Or it's only a few Dominic that tend to really go a little wayward and want to just lap up the foolishness and the misinformation that is being perpetrated in the public space every single day. So you know if you want to go go, go gravitate to them, it's them, it's them they will they will really appease to. You understand? And then this in a Rama too run up for St. Joseph. You come to let me that life sport was the best thing since life's bread. Eh? Where's Ruth Marchant today? Eh, in a Rama, where you answer that question. Where's Ruth Marchant today? After 14 years, after 10 years, I should say. Where's Ruth Marchant? Eh? The first murder that took place on that estate witness in that life spot. And when you come to tell me, I put on the back day to continue with that kind of behavior. We have, we have, Dominic, we have to be wrong and sick in this country mm. to take good of our thoughts, to put back these people after all these problems. So Dominic is the only one ministry. These people tarnish every single office and ministry in this country of Trinidad Bigo. Now I see the Safari but now going after the, 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 the um, oh gosh, um, the advisory, the, the, I think it's the, um, the former house speaker, we named Barry, said, uh, Berger, yeah, and then, the Constitution. She's going after, you know, I, I want to let Skito to recuse himself. Why did the Safari but until Ratman to recuse himself from Parliament? Why is she until Alaram? Why she ain't tell Kodisha I mean, David Ugly, Barry Padarat, Jolene John, Rudan Monilal, and the list goes on and on and on. Tell them we cruise themselves from Parliament because all of them have a lot of questions to answer and before the court. Right? But you're coming to tell people, I tell Mr. Barry at Berger at Trinidad, that he should recuse himself because he, he, he's not supporting you with your rhetoric and the BS. You understand what I'm telling you? But as I always say, general election is a mere 70 months away. Right? Let us wait. Let us see because you know what? The days go along, Dominic. They try, they, they, they go into first frustrate the process and frustrate the minds and the electorate to give to get them a, a, a sense of anger so they will they are hate against Dr. Rowley and the and the, the, the government. But I know that it has they can fool people some of the time. But you cannot fool people all the time. You understand? And people remember in 2010, 2015 what transpired. And I don't think that they want to repeat. 
They say once is a mistake and twice will be a habit. And I know that typical Trinidadians, the few who are too shy to listen to the, the rubbish that's saying out, I know right thinking citizens know what they have to do. If we progression, we're going forward. Dr. Rowdy, this is the last five years, he's going to put on and what he raised up leadership to somebody else and carry the party going forward. Unlike the UNC, who's afraid to call her into the election if she won't party. But you're committed to come on to come on, come on, she has to be go. That ain't going to happen. You understand? But this being said, I'm going to good program as usual. Leave it there. Leave it right there. Dr. Alice, Dominic. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Hello, good afternoon. Yes, sir. Yeah, then the political director. The the who was the president at Petition? Gillet or um Khaled? Um Khaled was the president. Um Gillet was the chairman. All right. Well, what we see you I'll keep bringing back the statement for you. Mm -hmm. As you deal with certain things for the intersection, right? Mm -hmm. um, with the UNC and this, and the nonsense. You remember the same Malcolm Jones was, and Malcolm Jones was the president at one time, right? Um, he was chairman, executive chairman. Chairman? Yes. Chairman? Yeah. Right. Malcolm Jones P. I'm wondering if you can remember the big brother, brother about Malcolm Jones P at the time when they the, the opposition was making noise, they were sent something thousand dollars a month. Mm -hmm. Right. When this other chairman come in, you know what was his thing? Mm -hmm. One hundred and something thousand. But they were making noise on the right, it was under the PNM. Seventy something thousand from Malcolm Jones. <laughs> and on, on the outside, that chairman was getting more than that. Mm -hmm. You don't understand what's going on. And look at how they make noise. And they to show how these people and them are hateful. Black people and when these people looking at the associates with the PNM is a problem, but they could do it. But you see the among that they raised this man pay to, and when there's something to open you up, the next man who was them put I ain't a noise, I ain't a word hmm. from them, from the supporters. And, and as you see this, more is less with the UNC and less is more because because you are showing them about the barrels of oil in order to keep the refinery running. Mm -hmm. And these people you would think that they would have understand to say well that person is general to be able to um country because they are to buy in the US, we understand, but they say that that we losing because they, they do that so we lose in US. Them, I mean, um, they lose any years because I think they understand it. I don't know who does it. I don't know why they would be doing that. And anyhow, they promote ignorance, right? Mm. The ignorance is a pro the promotion of ignorance. So they will always talk this thing because you'll have people who, like what I until as they say, right, will follow these things. And if you really go to church and you will hear them make a noise and swear, and that will affect our religion for religion and for that support. As the union is supposed to have sense to understand. So, how the country will run it? With that way that they were doing all the time. With, we would have been at that state that they would have done great with and all kind of things. And these people still have the ability to tell you about Patrick every day they were about you refine you, you refine you. You know, it, it just gets so fixed. And people who you feel supposed to be intelligent, anyhow, they already say you could have a degree and still the idea. Mm -hmm. And that's a reality. Because the kind of people that we make noise of about petition and I mean um we find me and you find me and that kind of thing, you know. And Mr. Ina Robert, something has to be wrong with this guy. These people is this strangers to the truth. He and Gary. Yeah, you, you know you know um what uh, you said the other day and I check it out. What um Sandy John what Sandy John um taken the court for. Mm -hmm. And you would, you keep people on the sun. You know this man all about and telling people before about how the government paid how much money to call our house. The, the, how you call it again? The, the sanitary yeah. court would to investigate. Mm -hmm. And that time is the service of police service commission. Yes. Yeah, this is fine. 
and you will be and this man just is just talking that and people following this man with that why are you lying openly to when you we are concerned with him lying now. Mm-hmm. I really talking that's not that is true to the person. Mm-hmm. And you know people will be following this man but and mm-hmm. you know what I mean? I wanna say down to follow me. I just this 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 as I said I talk about God really and I just like I can't continue because it's too much alive and people fall in the real hard kind of thing. Thank you for allowing me to contribution and listen to it. Thank you, sir. It's very easy for me. It's very easy for me. We will revisit Gary on Friday with respect to this. Uh, mm-hmm. on Good afternoon, service. Dominic. Hi, hi. Afternoon. Dominic. Hi. Dominic, I will ask you. Uh-huh. Is um, the new big man or a little? <laughs> What's up, Rob? I mean, I say he has to say something that is the same thing over. I don't think the Rob is more genuine. Mm. He's not doing that. I don't think he will give his wife what she wants to anybody. Mm. Big man, I put up with this man. I put this man. Say in America, no fucking hair. That's the wrong reason I'm saying. Right? And you're not talking about it. Say in America, when someone starts to come back. Mm-hmm. Even they upset it, people. <laughs> What's your best? Brian. Hello? Good afternoon, Dominic. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. <laughs> Dominic, you remember, well, you wouldn't know this, but back in the day, you saw the This is called disco. So when you go to the disco, mm-hmm. you always used to go and like just sit on a particular seat now. Right. You know? Oh, you know, because you're, all, you're accustomed. Every time you go to the disco, you're, you're looking for your seat. But they didn't see anybody sit on the ticket back now. Mm-hmm. You know? And, and uh, when there was nobody there, or when, or when they got up, you run into sit on there because it was comfortable. Right. I feel somebody's, some, some people's brain make up that way, Dominic. Mm. Mm. But if they have somebody inside that they to talk about, mm. not to talk about, then it's just fixed. You understand? So if some people rent space for free inside some people's brain, you understand? When they're under the sea, and they can't call, that's how they hurt them. I, I, I don't want to look, I don't want to search for something, I don't want to look for You could only talk about that particular person. You understand the rent that that, that person renting space for free in the break. But you see, Dominic, I'll tell you something. Mm-hmm. Right in the middle of just after the middle of March this year, you know there were 77 mass murders already for this year in America. Mm. But it's a, but you ever hear you ever hear the, the president of the United States always talking about that? So you just talk about it, so no. But you know we have people from Trinidad that run up in like it's nobody business, and they are no concern. No, 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 no. Run up there every two minutes. They're up there. You understand? Mm. But their own country, they bad talk. Between 2010 and 2015, when money was just given away and nothing was being done with the magnificent stuff around the Queen's Park, Savannah, and the Red House and so on. That was okay. So when the tourists came, there were no pictures to be taken by the President's House and, and, and the, the, the Red House and Mesla and all these other places. Everybody mm-hmm. liked how it was looking now. Some mm-hmm. people, I should say, love how it was looking. But when Dr. Rowley decided to fix it, oh God, oh God, how much money they spend on these things? They, they don't really want it. You see, that is what they like. They like to see ugly. I tell some people, every time I hear them, I want to say, I want to buy you a mirror boy. Like you look, keep looking in it because some people just like ugly. Hmm. You understand? Mm-hmm. And they love to, they like to talk ill of their own country. And they, and they could hear this, they could have a smile on the face. That is the bad part about some people from Trinidad and Tobago. Hmm. They like to see this place ugly. But thank God we have to see certain right thinking leaders who will do the right thing to ensure that when the tourists come, the same tourists will come. As they came in droves this year, it was the biggest ever. 
they will have something beautiful to look at and take out nice pictures to carry back to their families in England and Europe and America and so on. I say, hey, Trinidad has to be going to a nice place to visit. Mm. Yeah. So, but Dominic, I'll tell you something about about heritage and the refinery. Lots of people are forgetting, Dominic, mm. that this government had two major debts to pay. You might see they didn't want to pay the debt. The numbers even talk about it. And they gave away our patrimony, our our oil and gas for free until 2024, from 2015 to 2024, and never told us anything. It was only when this government got into power. We keep talking about it all the time. And what had happened was that, yes, you were correct. Asnali was correct. We, ne we never sold the, the, um, the raw crude. The raw crude was, pre was um, prepared and sent to Point of Air. And we prepared it down by us and it was sent to the refinery. Yes, sir. That was done. But then since the refinery closed down, there was a reconfiguration of the line work to facilitate the selling of the crude. Because people saw, even the UNC thought that well, that was madness. Mm -hmm. But we couldn't get any money because we, because that, we never did it before. So I understood what they were thinking. But we already had markets because I'll tell you why. Our crude is far better than West, West Texas crude. And just about as good, or maybe a dollar or more less than Brent crude, which was the benchmark for world crude. You understand? And therefore, we would have got top dollar. I could remember people were saying, oh, God, that, 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 our crude has so much sulfur in it, we will never get it sell. So it's just people who profess to be in the know. But little did they know that our crude was benchmark against Brent. Because we were superior to West Texas intermediate. You understand? That's the American standard, West Texas. And Brent was the English standard, or the world standard. And we were better than West Te Texas, but as just about as good as Brent. And therefore, since then, when the Honorable Prime Minister decided to throw down the refinery, which was a bugbear on the coffers of the country. I would have carried this country straight into the IMF because the UNC didn't know what to do with the, with the, with the company. What they did, they hid the wrong that was going on, the, 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 how should I put it, the, the loss of money that the refinery had in the books. So when people were looking at the books and they decided to separate and say, let, let us decide what part of Petrochin is making money, they recognized that exploration and production, as it was known then, was making up the money. But it looked as though, when they looked at the books, because of how the books were being done, that hey, the entire company was making money, when that, that was not true. And what was going to happen with them, Dr. Ori, and they took office in 2015, with all of the issues that they had to deal with, that the eight hundred and fifty million dollars US dollars plus another seven hundred and fifty million US dollars was coming up in twenty eighteen and twenty twenty three respectively. Yes, and it had to be paid. And if it wasn't paid, we would have been the country would have been downgraded and we would have been in the trolls of the IMF. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Rowdy had to make a firm decision. Because we could not continue to guarantee raw crude, raw international crude to supply the refinery. It could not be done and then run the country at the same time. Because people must remember that the UNC signed up a 14% uh, raise for public servants and they never paid it. Although our uh, name, the, um, the senior superintendent from Central Terry was paid in six months and that was not true. Johnny Abraham. Correct. Remember? He mm -hmm. said so, but he wasn't paid. Yes. So the U.S. signed it. And was telling us everything good, everything good, everything nice. But everything was nice. There were two terms of depression in the country. Two terms in January. Two periods. 
story. You understand? So therefore, what was happening? When Dr. Rowley made up his mind what was going to happen, we would import the finished material and sell it back to on the local market as well as the Cur and keep our Caribbean market. And that proved to be successful. Shut down the refinery and, and place emphasis on heritage and heritage would eventually grow and they were able to renegotiate the pay repayment of the money which worked for Petro which worked for Petroton Holding Company, the people of Trinidad and Tobago and Heritage. That was in 2018 when the refinery closed down. Dominic, so that was $12 billion more or less owing on the, on, uh, owing outside, US dollars. Today, Dominic, today, we have paid back almost $8 billion and heritage continues to grow and continues to pay the taxes, the remittances to the government and the people of Trinidad and Tobago. And now that they have found this 500 bar is an in addition to what they continue to find and sell. Mm -hmm. Because every month, we sell approximately 1 million barrels of oil. And that is US dollars, US dollars coming back to Trinidad and Tobago. We sell two loads of 500,000 barrels of local crude found down in the fields from heritage that comes up to point of air. It is prepared for sale. And with the reconfiguration of the line work, we sell it twice a month. And that brings in a lot of money. That is why heritage is able to pay back to the government and the coffers of the country every year approximately $2 billion, make a profit for themselves, and pay off the loans. So in a short space of time coming up, we'll be able to pay off that $12 billion, and all of that money plus the new wells that are being drilled, and the reconfiguration of Atlantic LNG, all that money will be coming to where? Us, we the people. And the heritage will be well on its way to expand, as they are doing now with IMAP, where they are assisting the youth today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You understand? But people don't talk about these things. According to, to Eric, <laughs> David Ugly, don't talk about that. Mm. He's talking about how much money for the dry docking and the vessels that they refuse to dry dock for five years, three months, and 14 days. That is the spirit on the express. But we have to sell the express. And the two spirits still try to repair to come back into service. They won't talk about that. But we are doing our due diligence and we are servicing the vessels between Trinidad and Tobago. So the vessels will be seaworthy and will be licensed properly to be on the sea. And there will be no hint of danger for those who use that vessel to traverse the Galleon's passage. They don't talk about these things. But he's studying. Let me do some maths. Uh, uh, I buy about $5 million. Very simple maths. If we spend in $2.5 million a month, and if you're still here for two, for two months, and it's going to be five million? <laughs> well, let me do so much. Wow, so great, David Ugly. you so bright. But you come in and say, come on, let's come clean, come clean. Why you don't come clean with that car where you bring back and you, you, and you, and you, you serve the authority, your, 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 your own benefit to, 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 to benefit somebody else, your, your good friend. But you ain't talk about that. Or you come in every day on my radio, on my TV to talk stupidness. I'm where with you. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I want to know when your case calling. That's what I want to know. I want to know when your case calling. Because there's a place for you waiting up in Golden Grove. You can't get away. The wheels are turning slowly, but they're turning. And your day of reckoning will come. David Ugly. So while Heritage is making money, Dominic, mm -hmm. and they're going to drill more wells in the Soldado field, yeah. right? They will find more oil. Because I could remember when, when as you spoke about it, but come not come with a little bottle and show you, and I look, 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 oh, look how much oil we find. Mm. Up to today, nobody never asked them, well, what about that oil you say you found? What is it with it? How much you ever took out of the ground while you were there as Prime Minister? 
she would never be able to answer those questions. But they don't ask those hard questions. Correct. Everything is a smile, a wink, and a laugh. And that's how they want to live. Fool the people, fool the people, fool the people all the time. Prayer and Tobago understand what is going on. We are on the way up. There's no more going back down. We went down to the bottom, a bottom pit between 2010 and 2015 with lies and propaganda. But right now, heritage is on its way. And I must thank the honor of Dr. making that strong decision as a leader. Because another leader might have, might have covered to make it, as Kamala Prasad said it. She could not make the decision. That is why the downstream industry was, was suing us for over $8 billion that they never told us about. And that is why Norman Christie had to run to the Honorable Prime Minister in 2015 and say, hey, all you ain't getting no money, you know? Because the arrangements we have with Kamala and them, all you ain't getting nothing until 2024, you know, that is nine years from now. Mm. But Dr. Rowley had to act. And he did so. And today, we are seeing the benefits of his decision as a leader who knew what he had to do because of his experience, his knowledge, his know-how, and his ability to face it and to protect us, we the people of Trinidad and Tobago. And we must thank him and we must thank Minister Stewart as well and all the others who are doing, especially the Minister of Trade, who is school, who is doing human service, the Minister of Youth and National Service, Pastor Cummins, so many things are happening in this country to the youth now. And you don't need no qualifications in most of them in order to be your own boss and to develop yourself. But you see what's happening with the guns. And you see what's going on with some people in this country. They like it too. They have a choice. Either you follow this leader or you go back to 2010 and 2015. And I bet you this time it will be much more worse. Dominic, you have a good rest of the day. We shook the wali to all our brothers and sisters. Eid, Eid, Eid. I'll be sorry. You, you, want, you want to end up as a meme? Hang on, sorry. Happy <laughs> Eid of Mubarak to all our brothers, Muslim brothers and sisters. And all the best to them. Thank Enjoy you. the rest of your day, though. You too, sir. Right, so folks, it is <laughs> one one fifty seven. Let me thank you all for joining me today. Yeah, no, it's a holiday and today is a day to relax and so on. But um, all right, let me just take this one last one quick. Hello, good afternoon. Hello, Hello good afternoon, Mr. Kwe. Yes, sir, good afternoon. Um, let me ask you, are you familiar with the name Joseph Kugel? Yes, I am. He was the minister of propaganda from the Hitler regime, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think he is the, the infamous individual who coined the statement that if you tell a lie often enough, it will eventually become the truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, he's the man, the, the man who, who, who uh, broke that statement. Mm -hmm. Well, we have a situation in this country now where the opposition apparently is taking full advantage of that thing. And Mr. Romain, I'm sure that you're aware that the only thing which could trump a lie is the truth. Right. So now I'm wondering, because I'm thinking, had I been in the position of the media officer of the PNM, I would have been on them like, a leech. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Do you know the government has the right to um, demand <coughs> from the, the electronic media, especially at prime time, space for public announcement? Are you aware of that? Yes, which the UNC People's Partnership used between 2010 to 2015. This is what I am saying. Now, the, 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 the print media... You cannot make demands in them. I suppose you can advertise, but they could put in any part of the newspaper which, which, mm. which they wish to do. Yes. Right? You cannot demand that they put it on the front page, the second page, the third page. They can put it in the back of the newspaper. But the electronic media, the radio, the TV, 
excuse me, I was going to target him in the automatic station. I would do things like what, now if you're following the American situation, you would notice now that, that um, President Biden, his campaign is using excerpts of Donald Trump on mm. the advertisement. Yes. Because there are some of them saying, well, look, the ex-president said this, and they want to take lies of what he said. Right now, we have a, a hell of a lot of problems with the, the um, abortion issue, because I think Arizona Supreme Court instituted a law that was passed to consider 1864 or something like that. Mm -hmm. Women could vote, um, um, so if we were still these are all kind of thing, and that's what they want to bring back now. So he has a problem with his evangelical people who totally against abortion. And Mr. Trump is now saying it's going to leave it to the state. And as a result, I was going to ask as an example. But in any case, what I'm saying is this. The electronic media could be targeted. And something similar to what is being done to the state, I would take lives like serves of those people, whether it be from the parliament, when I be at the news conferences and every time they say something, you would hear appearing this look, this is what you said. This is what is who is responsible for what happened out here. You know that Mr. Um, the former PM AG and the present senator is responsible primarily for um you still fit this law that we had restricted bail for murderers, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm wondering if the majority of the population are aware of that. Mm -hmm. I was going to be telling them that, that every minute of the day, every single thing which I have to do in Parliament, and I'm sure changed by the opposition, I was coming out and telling them people at them over and over and over. Listen, I would have been like a teacher. Yeah. And in my mind, this is what is lacking out here. So hence the reason why the opposition is taking full advantage of the global system. And apparently, they are succeeding. Mr. Romain, I yes, thank sir. you for the opportunity. Thank you, sir. Fair not, fair not. The, the problem will be addressed. You know, what we, know, we know what needs to be done. The team needs, knows what needs to be done. We just need to articulate that to the powers that be and hopefully in due course. Well, whether or not, you know, we know what we need to do and we will we will do it. The information will come up. I notice now I'm unable to access the Monday night forum meeting. There were a few pages that I would go on and I'd be able to see the live broadcast. Now, when you go, it's saying that um, it's restricted. So um, I don't know if it is that, that I am blocked, the page is blocked. They just block it. Why? If it is what you're, what you're saying is the truth and it's factual, why are you blocking it? Leave it open. But all you can't take the jamming when people come in in the comments and refute any nonsense that they say while they're on the platform, the lies that they are telling and fact-checking in one time. And, it's, and the supporters can't handle it too. Eh? They, instead, when, instead of refuting, when they're telling you, why well, do you go on the PNM page and why well, do you do this? And PNM laptop fly when they come in and be, and be take. Well, then tell them, stop telling lies. And then it wouldn't be a problem. So now I can't access it on Kamala page, I can't access it on Douglas Politics page, I can't access it on, on um, Break Free. So if anybody can tell me where I'd be able to access um, the Monday Night Forum so I could look at it, listen to what some of them said, and, and we could treat where that is. Yeah, but yes, I'll be saying that, yes, they blocked my, <laughs> they can't take it. Because what I started to do at recent time is when every speaker that comes on, when they're saying something that I know to be untrue, or if it's an act of hypocrisy, I would just go in the comments and post a newspaper article or something that refutes. Or like when David Lee talking, I would put up the article talking about him being charged when he wants to come and talk rubbish. Yeah? But anyway. Eric, you're my last caller for today. Dominic. Mm -hmm. Well, I see, um, I see, in, but you know, you know, I just came to Facebook. Mm -hmm. So... I would um I would advise you to go up on the Barataria Saria page because mm. I see like somebody does does um, on that page there. so you know I just came through so you go up on that page and they will um it will just be ready. Okay. 
Right there. Yeah. I will do that. Thank you, sir. And thank you all so much for joining me today. Always a pleasure. Let me tell you to enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your holiday. Keep it safe. Um, don't overdo whatever it is that you have planned for the rest of the day. And God's willing, we will chat again on Sunday. We will be discussing Mr. Brent Thomas and the hypocrisy of those who are now his staunch defenders. Talking Gary and the rest of them. Yeah? We will remind them of a few things. They want to talk about abduction. We will talk abduction on Sunday. Folks, enjoy the rest of it. And that's it for me today.